Mr. Zuma, how are you? Panel, the black pen. What's your favorite line? What's going on? I love him, man. Like a tribe called Quest. Episode 46. You know, I was actually nervous, and I, I told you this before we went on, because I know you're currently on a presidential campaign, and uh, we've built a relationship. <clears throat> you feel like a brother to me. I definitely feel the same way. So I was worried I about that. us being clowns on camera, you know. <laughs> Because I can only imagine like international stakeholders in your life are going to be watching this, you know, and studying it like in detail. So I, I obviously as a brother want you to like look your best. And I don't want to say like clownish nonsense and whatever, but more than anything, thank you so much for coming through, bro. We did a lot of it's just to live this here lifestyle. You came here busy playing music like your own Joburg. This guy straight from the bottom. We can cut this. We can cut this conversation style. now. Cut it off now. Something, 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 <laughs> something some, some from the beginning. Good morning, my brother. How are you? You guys can now see what I have to deal with. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's good vibes. It's good vibes. You know, as much DZ, as we, how are you doing, we bro? say it's about what we're doing, we we easy. I'm doing good. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Like whenever I visit Durban now, I'm actually starting to feel like it's your hood. Like you, you own it, and the way you've hosted me. Uh, a good brother of ours, Winston Innes as well. The hospitality has been no. literally presidential. Thanks a lot, bro. I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, uh, I appreciate the relationship. Um, yeah. You know, we, we're building on something, an understanding, uh, mutual respect, and it's always good seeing you, you know. Um, Thank you. You, you, you. We've had this discussion in the past yeah. and on camera, off camera, but you're inspiring to a lot of people. Um, you bring a good message. You break it down in some weird and wonderful ways. But, um, you know, it's, it's palatable, and I think that is, that, that is what matters. Thank you. So I, I respect what you're doing, and I appreciate what you and your team are doing. Thank you. I've got a lot of questions on behalf of people that, that they'd like to hear you answer, because when you get on platforms, I think you end up doing a lot of political conversations, and a lot of people have actually got personal questions for you around your family, your dad, your twin sister, um, your wife, your kids, um, of course, the Guptas, Dubai. Maybe I'll start here. You currently still don't have a bank account. <coughs> well, why do you think I invite you to Durban? I invite you to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, that's why you did. <laughs> oh, you didn't notice that? No, um, I, I don't have a, any bank account. South African bank account? I do not have one. I haven't had one since 2015. How does that make you feel? No, it makes me feel like um, I'm, I'm grown. I'm able to survive without being part of a financial system. Yeah. Um, you know, unfairly shut out of it, I might I add, but um, it is what it is. Uh, life is full of trials and tribulations. You've got to know how to survive. It. So I'm still here. I'm still doing something right. And we'll see how it goes from here on. I, rem I remember it was also one of my questions when you sat with me and DJ Spoo last year. How are you surviving without a bank account? Have you tried to apply for a bank account? Are they? What are they saying, basically? Because this is... It's fundamentally important for a lot of us watching from the sidelines sure. of the power of the systems here and how they sideline you without justifiable cause. There's definitely, and I've said this before, um, I did ask. Um, um, I sent some some emails and mm. um, you know, I met a few people and asked, okay, what is what is the situation? You know, what's the reason for, for closure? Yeah. And the two reasons that they give is um, reputational risk um, and it's, they, they reserve the right. You know, which are neither here nor there uh, for me, um, especially since I have done nothing wrong. I've been accused of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I've stood my ground. Um, I've I've had my 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 day in court, as as, as they say, and I've I've come out and I'm still I'm still here. Mm. You know, I always I always say that I've I've come from being um, an unbanked minor into the banking sector, <laughs> uh, and well into, the, into into being banked. Yeah. Um, and I come full circle. I, I form part of the majority unbanked in this country. Um, which makes it more interesting and makes it more fun to have these conversations. Mm. Um, so the reasoning from my side are not good enough. Um, you know, I can I can you know say that there's people that have been convicted of of crazy you know besides financial crimes. What I mean, some absolute crazy crimes in this country that are sitting mm. in prison, but you know they've got the little bank cards, got the little accounts. No reputational um, risk. Zero reputational risk. Serial so. rapists, serial murderers. You name them. They have a bank account. They're there, chief. Stunting. I'm out here. Hustling. Crickets. <laughs> but Should it's all it's it's all good, you know. Um I understand it it's 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 
as much as it's something that's um, it's unexplainable from from my side, and um, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you said, you know, have I made any further um, overtures to the banks? You know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, it's 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 you know. I enjoy my. I should be enjoying my my constitutional rights mm-hmm. um, to have you know um, a right to be um, economically active in the country, um, and I'm not, and I'm not the only one. I think there's other people that that feel the same way, and it's something that um, it drives me. And and where we're going to, these are matters that are going to be dealt with, you mm-hmm. know, um, from a um, a policy perspective, because it's it's not on. It's not on. How how do you survive currently? Family, friends. That's just what it Penwell is. Penwell you know, coming to pay your bills in Durban. Up, straight up, and um, I'm glad I got my free tea here this morning, so it's going to carry me <laughs> into, into lunchtime. Um, but you know, it's 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 the people that I've surrounded myself with. You know, yeah. we're here for people. Um, we've been here for people. People have been here for me. Um, there's all sorts of support structures. You know, people are not going to let me down. Mm. Um, it's all love in the streets, and we carry on. We're not yeah. crybabies. We're not here. To, we're not. We're not here to to make a fuss about it. We see what you've done. It's all good. We'll carry on, and we'll meet up on the flip side. Should we, as the public, be campaigning against what's happening to you? Um, I was I was permanently deleted off Twitter. Okay, that's not a really a oh, bank sorry. account, but no, no, it's, it's, I campaigned to Elon Musk, and eventually he heard my cries and he brought me back. No. Should we be campaigning from the outside to be like, when Zenu to Duzan, and why why can't you have a bank account? Would you like to have your bank accounts back? From my side, I'd, I'd like to enjoy the freedoms everyone else enjoys um, yeah. without being painted in 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 any sort of negative light, uh, mm-hmm. because. The longer it goes on, um, it's the more people think, but okay, actually something might be up with this guy. Sure. And that's not the case. Uh, from that point of view, you know, I, I, I definitely, I will get my clarity. I will get, I will get my day where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this battle. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. Um, but I don't want people campaigning for me in my name. I want people to campaign for the rights, for the freedoms, for the yeah. truths. Because like, like I say, there have been people that haven't enjoyed a bank account um, or being active in, 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 the, in, the, in the banking system like mm-hmm. I have for whatever reasons. I'm not having a, a minimum deposit, you know, KYC is not meeting the... Um, no, your customer. You know, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So not, re- uh, not meeting the, the, the requisite um, um, check boxes and, and, you know, give people an opportunity. Not everyone has it like you have it. Mm. You know, we need to find systems to absorb people into this, um, into this, into this um, system and for everyone to live their lives. That's just as simple as it is. So the campaigning part, we should be fighting for the rights of everybody. It's not just me. Um, the people that have it worse than me, and yeah. I think you know that's that's just the the truth. Um, we need to we need to bear this in mind, and we need to understand that you know it's it's a bigger fight than just yourself or myself. So so you wouldn't mind if I constantly raise this on platforms, yourself of course because you're known, um, and then other people saying, look, just like we've got political prisoners still in prison to this day, black people sure. who fought for the freedom of this country, that we need to also speak up for people who have been sidelined by the systems. Uh, from my side, I think, like I said, this this um, this argument, this campaign, um, this fight needs mm. to be for the broader population, sure. not about me. For me, I'm, I'm I'll fight. Like I said, I will I will win this battle eventually, yeah. um, whether they like it or not, um, because I've done nothing wrong. Mm. Um, you know, as much as as much as people may believe it, I've stood my ground. Like I said, uh, I've stood the test and I've come out squeaky clean. Um, I will get mine. You know, I don't need people to to fight for me on this one. I've got this. One. Okay. But generally, for for the for the for the broader population of the unbanked, mm. um, it's definitely a fight that needs to be brought up every day, all day, because sure. people are going through some tough times and are not able to 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 do simple things like everyone else mm. because they've been marginalized by certain laws that don't include them. That's a bunch of cow manure, in my view. Do they do they free some of your assets? They freeze those. Oh, besides they froze, besides they froze. the bank accounts, yeah, everything. SIU, um, you know, they came. They came strong. You name mm. it, they took it. Things like homes, cars. You name it, they took it. Except one. To this thing. day, yeah, you haven't gone back. Till this day, till this day, <laughs> till this day, <laughs> day. <laughs> um, Bronze bomb. I don't know if you've ever spoken <clears throat> about it, and I'm not sure if you're allowed to speak about the the value of the things that they froze. Uh, I prefer not to. Okay. Um, it's it's definitely it's up there. Okay. Um, I prefer not to speak about values because you know people people start saying all sorts of things. I hear you. And, you know, um, but it's uh, to me, it's 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 value for sure. Um, it's valuable, um, and it's 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 something that I worked hard for. It's yeah. something that I spent a lot of time building up to, and it was just taken away. Um, as much as there were allegations, I get that. We're past that. 
they can't say there's no there's nothing active all they want to paint is pictures with um, rhetoric out there but you know when it comes to the actual factuals there's nothing mm. so all I'm saying is okay we've how many years uh, years are we in now um, what's the sixth sixth year um, if it's from 2015 we're like in the eighth year how's yeah. my maths five three? no no but I'm just I'm just saying just from from the time the, the allegations came out okay. to the actual um, proceedings so okay. legal proceedings so let's call it about six years um, like I said someone owes me an answer yeah. I'm a citizen of this country um, and and you know I've I've been wronged by by the system in my view, and you know, let's 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 talk about it. You know, if I if I, if I get my stuff back, I get it back. If mm. I don't, it doesn't matter. You've done the damage already. Sure. But all I'm saying is, you cannot just do things and expect to get away with it. This is so, our kind of party. We, so, we're going to have that conversation. So two quick ones, and I think this one will probably at some point lead to Dubai. I, I want to know your thoughts a around. Sip of my tea, G. God, please go that for was it. Graciously made. Black. It was graciously made. Yeah, um, I was offered coffee, by the way, man. I know my coffee. Um, I'm a connoisseur now. And uh, I refused because the coffee I was being offered. <laughs> now, the person, I might want to mention his name, talking about one teaspoon. <laughs> I'm like, nah, gee. One. Anyways, yeah, great tea. <laughs> Shots. Uh, your thoughts around... Bank, I hope this is not a deep question. Your thoughts are on banking and the money system leading into crypto and alternative currencies. Um, because there's some people I know who are based in Dubai who are into that kind of stuff. And then I wanted to ask, your father was president of the country. I asked myself, was he not powerful enough as the number one citizen to be able to intervene in his son's mistreatment by the systems? Um, let me put it this way: He had his own battles. Mm, those uh, are facts, you know. And he had he had his own he had his own fights. Um, he had a lot going on. And you know, people people misunderstand. They always think that some of us hide in the shadows. Um, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, and you know, we in the you know holding on to people's coattails. That's not the case. You mm. know, very simple thing. I was given the the rules of engagement early in life, and I've stuck by those rules. And the one thing that um, people need to understand about um, my, my father is he ain't coming to save nobody, hmm. you know, when it comes to matters that you are grown and able to face. You know, you there, this has been visited upon you, fair or not fair, uh, you know, do your thing. I've given you the tools, now is the time to, to fight. You've got your shield, you've got your spear, let's go, you know. So I've never expected him, he hmm. never has. Um, you know, I haven't called for... For, for for that sort of help because it's it's unfair to him. Um, I'm capable. I'm I'm willing. I'm mm. able. You know I can fight my my, my battles. Um, and as a number one citizen with his own trials and tribulations, I mean we can see till today, he's been struggling with his own um, fights. Yeah. You know you know he's how many years out of office, and he's still being still being dragged. So I'm not going to put my 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 efforts and energy and my my problems in someone else's hands. I'll sort them out myself. Okay. Um, your thoughts are on banking and money, um, yeah. an alternative. And then the crypto, yeah, you, you mentioned that. So I, I do believe people do need alternatives. Mm. Um, you know, besides, uh, this is not coming from a personal perspective with, with, with the, the challenges that, that I've mm. had, but people need options. You yeah. know, in, 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 in the absence of options, people are, are, are led to do all sorts of, of, of dubious things to operate, um, to live, to survive, to mm. feed their families. And, you know, We've seen it um, when it comes to people being personally sanctioned, if I may use that that term, and as well as as as, as countries being sanctioned. Mm. You know, um, we all have been seeing what's been happening in Zimbabwe, and and you know what sanctions has led certain people to do. Yeah. You know, once you start closing off um, people from the system, people will find other means um, to 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 survive. Um, we look at what's happening even in in something as simple as the petroleum space. You know, in South Africa. And, you know, people are struggling to operate. I'm just talking about um, wholesalers, suppliers that are not the majors because it's all boils down to majors and then everyone else. Cartels. Uh, call them what you want. Monopolies, cartels, big boys. People that are keeping <coughs> other guys out of the game. Yeah, because, you know, the, the, the rules of engagement, um, the, the, the policies uh, suit them. Yeah. You know, it's not a level playing field. We understand that. But in the absence of letting everyone else be a part of the economic play, people find ways. Of, of 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 skimming the system sure and i think we've seen this in 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 zimbabwe i mean this is one of of many 
um, such scenarios where mm. people will play in, 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 in the gray area. Um, some people get away with it, some don't. But the problem is by the time you try to legitimize stuff, by the time you try and, 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 and um, reform policy, it may be too late because now the illicit way of, of trade becomes the new norm. The norm, yeah. You know, we've seen with uh, what happened during lockdown, mm. not just here, but, you know, a lot of places in the world with how the alcohol trade and the cigarette, uh, cigarette, the illicit cigarette, uh, cigarette trade went. Um, and, you know, still till today, they're finding it very difficult to, um, to, to, to solidify their stance on, on, on how that, um, um, how that unbanning went because, Within that few months, people came up with new ways. People mm -hmm. were profiting. There was new players that came to the market uh, because they found loopholes in the system. And the major struggle, mm -hmm. and that was one of the biggest fights of, of, of COVID in this country, was uh, <laughs> the banning of, 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 of cigarettes. So, um, so, which is strange, but you know, it speaks to, to the amount of, 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 of cash being generated and mm -hmm. the volumes being moved at that time. But I mean, that's one of many, many sectors. So. People need the opportunity to to be part of some sort of formal um, e economic structure, banking um, system, and if it's not the traditional kind, then you know things like um, 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 crypto and and all these interesting blockchains that allow people to to transact and interact mm -hmm. um, outside of the system. And we're seeing it starting to gain momentum. Yes, you have central banks that are you know watching it very closely because they understand um, if if. If they turn a blind eye to it, um, it is definitely going to be something that's going to be um, irreversible. Mm. Um, but at the same time, people are having an opportunity to 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 trade. People have an opportunity to to make purchases, to transact. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think the more options for people, the better, in my view. Are you a fan for crypto and blockchain? Are you are you looking to? You're speaking about the unbanked. Um, this is this is basically why I was asking this question because yeah. we've got an unbanked. And is the solution to get them banked into systems that are corrupted and keep certain people out? Or is the solution, let's try and promote alternative platforms for them to trade outside of that and create a, a new normal that maybe is more democratic? Uh, pen or the black pen, from my side, I think. It's your favorite line. It's just, yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, and actually, you didn't give me props, yo. I'm, I'm out here on my... You're looking fresh, black on black. You know what I'm Sorry, saying? Sorry, my black apologies, black. I see you. Black on black on black I on see black, you. you know. Representing for you, G. DZ come on, the Black Panther. No, no, I'm here on the They should cast you for the new Marvel I'm, I'm, Black I'm, Panther. I'm out here representing, you know, pushing the penualism, G. That's what's you know? up, homie. I'm here, you know. Thank you so much. Talk I appreciate you. No doubt, man. No doubt. I appreciate you so much. I got you, baby. I got you. Um, all I ever say is let people decide. Give them the opportunities, um, give them the choices. And people will decide whether it's unbanked, whether it's people that are banked, people that want to try new avenues of trade. Just give them the opportunities. Eventually, people will uh, will gravitate to whatever suits them or whatever makes them comfortable. You know, so I always advocate for doing the right thing. Um, not everything is about taking on a fight that is um, in, in in protest. Always, okay. yeah. All I'm saying is yeah, just give the options and let the people decide. The unbanked mm -hmm. will come will come online either way. And you might find that people that have been operating in the traditional banking sector might fall in love with 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 um, the the alternative. Mm. You know, just give them the give them the choice. That's all I'm saying. Are you are you a proponent for crypto and blockchain? I'm are you saying people should go for those alternatives? I'm a proponent for options. Okay. Choices. And if crypto is one of them, if blockchain is one of them, I mean, I've I've, I've taken a look into them. I'm, a lot of stuff hasn't made sense over the years, but as we go along, it's like look. This is a viable, um, 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 a viable angle when it yeah. comes to 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 the way that the world is set up. You know, the people operating there. There's new value being created. I mean, it's crazy what's happening in different parts of the world when you come across um, the, the the value that's been created in the in the blockchain space mm -hmm. and the crypto space. And you know, they're rivaling the traditional um, bigwigs when it yeah. comes to the different sectors and and how that is created um, ructions uh, globally. And mm -hmm. I think it's 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 also exciting um, that there's a new crop. Of, of 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 thinkers when it comes to how the world is set up. Um, there's a new crop of of people that have generated crazy amount of of, of value, and people say, "No, it's not real value. It's going to crash and all that sort of thing." Um, but you know, we've heard a lot of things when you know, the car was invented, when the airplane was invented. Yeah. You know, naysayers will be out there. Even the fiat currency we have today is yeah. also arguably nothing. Yeah, because it's not backed by anything anymore. Correct, and if you look at the way the world is 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 is, is setting up, I mean, it's definitely restructuring. There's a rejigging and revamping of um, the global order, mm. you know, and 
as South Africa, we, we, we've, we've always been historically mm. at the cutting edge. We've been at the cusp. We've been leaders in, in, um, in, in, in you know, adopting new waves, um, new technologies. We're falling behind. You know, we need to be at that, 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 that coal face, yeah. and we are not. There's some interesting things happening in the country, but it's not at the level that it should be. We should be yeah. pushing, and we should be, you know, on this African continent, we should be, you know, the leaders. Um, We're we being have, dominated by the East, Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda. Correct. We should be leading. You know, Nigeria is doing some interesting things as yeah. well in that space. Um, you know, and we need to we need to 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 readopt the culture of 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 being first to market mm. as South Africans in whatever sector. Sure. Um, and you know, if we if if we don't, we'll always be the followers. We'll be the copycats, and that's what I'm saying. And and one of the things that I, I will be pushing for is. Is alternatives, mm. um, technological alternatives that will lead to prosperity in this country. That will lead to security. That will lead to inclusion, financially, mm. socially, whatever it is. Um, it's very important. This is this is where we're at in our time. You know, um, this is uh, our population is 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 is, is ripe mm. for for adopting um, these new waves, and we should grab it with both hands. Bro. A lot of people care about you. Well, besides the honeys. I had, uh, you know, this gentleman, Rob Hersoff, come here yep. and uh, <clears throat> I asked him about you and he was like, oh, I don't like Tutuzani. And he was like, but I'm sure he'll get the, the female vote. A lot of women love you, but outside of that, a lot of people care about you and they, they'd like to know how your relationship is with your dad. They'd like to know your relationship with your twin sister. Uh, and I don't know, I know you don't generally speak about this, but maybe you can just touch on uh, married life, being a dad yourself. We speak about you and your dad, but we don't speak much about you as a father yourself. So let me let me actually start off with with, with um, Mr. Hersop. I know you guys have a good relationship. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Um, when did you meet Mr. Hersop? I just... Uh, I met him... <clears throat> Excuse me. It may have been... Early last year, if not 2021. Okay. I think there was a speech he did at a business conference seminar where he was speaking about the ANC and thugs and no, all was, these things. He, was, he went hard, boy. <laughs> now he was, he was going in. He was going. I actually really enjoyed that speech. Mm. Uh, so I decided to make a video at the time. Um, and he's not on social media. And a lot of his associates sent him the video and he reached out and we met up a couple of months thereafter. Nice. We met up in Joburg when he was up here visiting his parents um, and, and we hit it off, you know, lots of debates and arguments. <clears throat> he represents, I believe, a certain perspective, which I think needs to be challenged in this country. Uh, him and a lot of the people that he's introduced me to, I think they care about SA, but I think there's a unintentional lack of empathy of some of the struggles. And I think people like myself are meant to try and help with that. Sure. And we've been on platforms. It, he's introduced me to people. I've been accused of being captured by him because when you're seen with an <laughs> old white guy with money, you're captured. When you're seen with a young guy with money, it's it's fine. Sure. Um, but yeah, man, he's he's he comes from a boy school culture, is what people don't understand. As much as he's a Bali now, I think he's over 60. Michael House boy. And if you know the jock life in this country, the swear words like a pirate the chirps at other schools. So he's still like that. But to people who aren't aware of that, you come from a legacy family that has built its wealth during colonization, apartheid, and you're speaking like this. It sounds arrogant, racist, detached. So part of my hope is to try and get him to see a different perspective, try and get other people to see a different perspective of people like him so that we can find middle ground and some of the resources can then shift kind of situation. But yes, he's got the same mindset of Guptas, nine wasted years. Dutuzani and the Guptas are thugs and they're criminals and they looted our country. All right. So yes, that's my relationship with Rob. No, nice. Um, look, from my side, um, since you raised him and I asked the question, and the reason I'm doing that is I know he's had some interesting things to say about a lot of people. Yeah. Including myself, because, you know, people, you know, reached out to me like, yo, there's this dude saying this <laughs> and that. And I'm like, all right, cool. <clears throat> so... Um, I have nothing against Mr. Hersov. Um, I actually met Mr. Hersov, maybe mistaken. I'm not sure why I didn't say so, but I mean, I'll say so. 2008, maybe 2009. Okay. Um, in Cape Town. It was in the social scene. 
first time I met him was at was it was at a place I don't know if it still exists called the Grand Beach Cafe. Okay. Um, we had mutual people, uh, mutual friends, um, some of the old bullies, you know, cool cats. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, you know, we were rolling deep, we were doing our thing, you know. Young stunner. Told to me. <laughs> um, this was before they froze the assets and switched <laughs> yeah. off your accounts. No, they're like, still, look at this uppity nigga, switch nah, off his bank accounts. There's no accounts that will stop our shining, but that's the thing, people. Oh, the snap. mistake, the mistake people make is they think that we're tied to to material um, stuff, to wealth, to money. That's what makes us. Mm. No, my brother, you're not it's going to. Than that. Nah, you're not going to put our flame out. You're real value. Here. Real value is in people. 100%. Not you build money. relationships. So it's there. about people. Hundred, And then the reason I'm raising this is I'd met him and uh, at the time I, I do believe, I mean, you might say whatever you want to say, we took a liking to each other. Yeah. Nice gentleman. Um, were we friendly? Were we texting? No. You know, we bumped into each other. Like I said, we had common people in um, in the circles. And then fast forward to um, 2020, then mm. he started his... Uh, Ranting. Yeah, he's, he's freestyling off the top of the dome, talking all oh, sorts of- Oh snap, no speech, boy, <laughs> no presentation, wrong you know, easy. You know, doing this thing and, um, you know, it is what it is. Everyone is entitled to yeah. their opinion. And like I say, people, you know, people hurl insults. People will always say things, um, you know, we're in this space uh, and I didn't want to be in this in this public life, but it's just, it's happened. We're here. Um, there's people that like us, people that don't like us, people yeah. that say things. And, you know, we're not going to react to to people in, insulting us left, right and center, you know. But the people that we believe um, it could have been handled differently will will say so, mm. you know. Because in this case, what happened was, and I say 2020, this is now bear in mind. After standing next to the posters there uh, of of the current president, ABC, yeah. this and that, there was a a clip that he made. It looked like um, Hout Bay. It looked like Hout Bay. I don't know that sure. uh, that area. Um, bumped into our mutual friend. I was in Dubai. Uh, we met up because yeah, we kept in touch and a very, I mean, he knows who I'm talking about. Mm. Um, and if he says otherwise, <laughs> it's all cap. <laughs> um, so we're in the mall, we're in Dubai mall, meet up with this gentleman. I want to mention his name because sure. I want to bring his, his his name into the into the mix. Um, it was just after the hard lockdown. Um, he traveled in. Um, we met up like we always do, discuss, um, you know, see how we can collaborate mm. and just catch up socially. And he said, hey, when is the last time you spoke to to Rob? Mm. Um, I said, no, I've, I've never had con- uh, contact with him the last time. And but I, I still, till today, with all the the mumbo jum- jumbo he's spoken, um, I still hold him in high regards. Yeah. You know? I think he's a nice guy. Um, you know, do I dislike him? No. Do I love him? No. You know, it's, I'm, I'm indifferent about it. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's, he's someone that he's done. He's done his thing. Um, he's had his time, but um, it's our time, bro. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's what it is, bro. Um, and he knows it, whether he likes it or not. So all the the, the ranting and, and, and all that sort of thing, um, you know, people need to understand. I spoke to him. Mm. I said, bro, are you still in touch with him? To, to, to the gentleman? He said, yes. I said, put him on the line. Bear in mind, this is after um, the, the, this was before he, he said stuff about me, but it was, yeah. It was after he was just started his his ANC sure. tirades and everything. So spoke to him. Good day, Mr. Ersov. How are you doing? Long time. Hey, how are you doing? Um, to design your cool, cool. Where are you? Nah, you know, he was traveling at that time, but he mm. spends bet- time between here and the UK. I said, no, I'm in Dubai. I'm with our common uh, brother here. Um, I'll be coming back to South Africa. Um, there's some interesting things happening um, in the political space, and I see that you've got some, some views. Yeah. Um, I think... It's an opportune time. It's the right time for us to sit down and see how we can we can take this thing forward. And they said, "No, would love it. Let me know when uh, when you're here." I haven't called him since. Came back. I've had a lot to deal with. Sure. Um, until I heard he was talking all this greasy stuff, and I'm like, "Okay, that's the way he feels. It's all good." Now, what I would have expected from mm. a respectable elder gentleman that shares a sim- similar circle. Once yeah. again, in in his life, I know I'm nothing. But in the in the in the broader circle, he could have picked up the phone and said, "Let me speak to this young man." Sure. That's how he really feels. Um, you know, I've never disrespected any of them in any way. I never will. Um, there's certain views that he has that I agree with. There's certain views that he has that I disagree with. Yeah. But now, when it comes to a um, sixty-plus or mid-fifties um, gentleman, there's one thing that he needs to understand, and a lot of 
people from his generation need to understand is when I have conversations with people, and that's, let's start off with um, with um, my kind, lovely black people. Uh, there's a lot of people I speak to in conversation when I'm invited to speak in some places, young people. There's a lot of people I, 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 I whatever message I'm putting across, I put across. And you'll see in a lot of my interviews, if I have the opportunity, I will place and I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, this is South Africa. We are black people, we are a majority. Have we gotten a raw deal? Most of us feel that way, but yeah. we can't say that if we're not stepping up, you know, uh, we need to play our part. But the one thing that we need to understand, and I'll say it here again, if we think we're going to develop this country without white people, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Without Indian people, it's not going to happen. Without colored people, it's not going to happen. This has to be a joint effort. Mm. Now, I'm not sure about you, but have you ever been um, racially insulted? Since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Kaffa, to, to this day. Pecky. What to are the this other words? day, um, nigger. To this day, Negro. I experience racism. Black to this bastard. Day. You know that's that's. It's not cool. You know, it's, it's, I actually get called a kafir in DMs. Thank you very much. Kaffer. It actually makes you almost want to hate white people. But, but know, then I have to remember. Look, maybe it's isolated. No, but what what I'm saying is, we get these. You know, um, and a lot of it is is second hand. You know, it's it's very rarely direct, and yeah. we know what racism look like looks like. We know what racism feels like. Yeah. You know, when you walk, it's not always about things being said. It's about the way you're treated and, and the way the energy moves around you. you know, we get it. We understand it. We, we, we well travel people and we experience people. So what I say is we're trying to build a Project South Africa, right? There's a demographic that I represent, whether people like it or not. There's yeah. a demographic that someone like Mr. Herzog represents, whether people like it or not. Yeah. Now, I can't go and have this conversation and say, and when people, remember, a lot of people are talking about hey, WMC, they must go and go back, colonizers, and the whole thing. Now, when we're trying to build and we're trying to bring people together, I cannot accept someone like Mr. Herzog saying what he's saying, yeah. insulting people. He said a lot of fancy things about other people besides myself. Mm. I can't accept that because as much as I've been racially abused, direct, indirect, over time till today, you know, I'm a child of putting people together, bringing yeah. people together. A lot of the people that know me know me. My circle is very mixed. I do it, and I do it deliberately because mm -hmm. that's my upbringing. I was I was brought up in 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 a fashion where everyone needs to come together. Mm -hmm. Different backgrounds, race, cultural, religious. We can all sit around the same table. Different upbringings, different histories, different stories, different experiences, but different financial classes. One hundred percent. Yeah. You know, um, different spending habits. But at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Mm -hmm. Peace, prosperity, safety, and security. Yeah, And we can achieve it. But now, if I'm trying to do this, bearing in mind I'm getting insulted day in, day out, and then the next thing, you go and say this. What, pe what are people going to say? They're saying, okay, you are busy trying to build this thing and look how they're treating you. Yeah. And now the mistake people like Mr. Mer Mr. Herzog make is you're not insulting me as an individual. Yeah. There's a whole lot of people like me. There's a whole lot of people that like me. Yeah. And they feel insulted, saying if you can insult someone that that um, we hold in high regards as much as I hold them in, in, in high regards, that means you're insulting us. Yeah. So when it comes time to sit around that table and have the discussions, it becomes increasingly difficult because that attitude is not welcome. Have your viewpoints. What you're saying is like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting things and 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 correct things that he's mm -hmm. saying. But the, the 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 point when he starts insulting and starts becoming unhinged, that's unacceptable. One of the things I, I worry about, so I think myself, Gaten McKenzie, we're in some of these circles. Sure. And Gaten tries, I know I try as well, to be aggressive in trying to explain to some of these well-off legacy white people how the real world works and how it sees things with the hope that we'll come together. And I've used this example before. I'm going to raise it again because it was important to me. Given Mkari invited Johan Rupert to sit down at a Power FM, I think, uh, conversation. Sure. And part of that was meant to be, let us see if we can work together. Yeah, I, saw, I saw that too. It seems the propaganda, because at least in my opinion, from traveling, I think it's propaganda. It gets so loud that even people you highly respect, people you expect to be educated, informed, well-traveled, they also seem to, they, they struggle to run away from narratives. And again, like I said, part of what I'd like to do, because you're right, it's, it's our time now. I sat at a, 
it was a sports gathering in Santon at one of the media houses many years ago. And there was a white gentleman who presented and he was giving a report on the birth rates of white people versus black people in South Africa. And he was explaining that Springboks, maybe not Bafana, Proteus, some of the more traditionally white sports, he says, if the coaches and the managers are not developing black talent, but they claim to love South Africa, the real talent is turning black and you need to, you can't just keep them out because they won't be enough. So if you claim to be legacy rich white person in particular, and you want South African in particular to thrive, you have to invest in black talent. There aren't enough white kids, talented, capable, hungry, dynamic white kids in this country to take, I mean, you look at America as a classic example. America's been built off the back of immigrants to this day. Elon Musk is an immigrant, wealthiest man in the world. He's not a fifth generation American, he's not. And if you're not gonna be welcoming of like changing tides and not invest in them, this is Johan Rupert who claimed he was trying. Rob and I have these conversations and we've said on this platform that we'd like to create platforms. We're gonna need to fight against the propaganda. We're gonna need to fight against the propaganda. Otherwise, I, I've started using this term of building like a springbok economy where you're from Zwitte, like Siakolisi, you're from a small town, Peter Steff, Dutoy, you're from a wealthy Stellenbosch family, Pretoria family. You're like, if we're not gonna come together and put the biases aside on, yeah, but my granddad was sure. killed by a black person, see, I won't tackle. Yeah, but we were oppressed by white people, so there's no way I'm playing with this guy in a team. We're never gonna be able to win. Sure. So I really do hope, and and maybe this is a conversation we'll have offline, um, because I love the idea to what you're saying of bringing people together. I love the idea of fixing some of the propaganda, ironing out some of the things, getting certain apologies, and then seeing how we can collaborate. Because yes, peace, prosperity, safety, and security. We all want the same things. 100%. You touched on your upbringing. I know I wanted you to speak about your family. Um, I don't know how deep you want to go. I, I was happy with the one-liner. How are things with your dad? Your twin sister's always on Twitter, uh, getting people upset uh, <laughs> in her own way. Um, and, I, and I catch the strays. You catch a lot of strays, yeah. boy, because you're twins. So in some of our heads, we're like, ah, and then <laughs> they're thinking the same thing. Your twin sister, you as a dad, uh, and I hope that leads into your upbringing, which I know people have heard your interviews, but we have to re-emphasize because they don't know. Anyways, the uh, family. Sure. Uh, family. How's things with the old man? One of my jokes, one of the things that made me laugh is the day <laughs> DJ Smoo <laughs> asked, <laughs> is your dad going to run again? <laughs> and, and I was like, he's old. And you were like, he's old. Not acknowledging bro. my love, me, my Jay-Z love. Yes, I can come hear on, your Jay-Z love, on, but I was finishing me. my line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Jay-Z. Okay, Jay -Z you, can, you can speak. Um, <laughs> um, Uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, what are the guys are saying when, when politicians start saying, well, uh, you must know they lie. <laughs> well, uh, look, the thing about, ah, he's lying. Ah. Um, I haven't seen him in some time. He's been busy doing his thing. I've been doing, uh, busy doing my thing. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I've, I've always said, and I always hoped is, um, you know, he gets some rest. He's, he's, he's played his part. He'll You're be, from child. Yeah, he's been he's been he's been fighting ever since, you know. Since he was a child. Yeah. And um, you know, he's been he's been hounded, he's been chased. You know, there's a uh the one uh, I always quote him because there's the one thing that he always says like hey, and he's told us all as his children. You know, I've 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 done my thing, I've played my part. Um I've I've been part of the liberation struggle. It's had people chasing me like they've chased a lot of people. And I fought my whole life. I mean, he's fought pre-apartheid, post, in the province here, um, at national level, post his presidency. And he says, you know what, guys, do me a favor. You know, in touch with you know, I'm not trying to bring any ill on anyone. Do me a favor. The day that I'm gone, the last thing that you do when you're burying me is make sure you have my shield and my spear in the coffin with me. Because wherever I'm going, I know it. <laughs> I'm still going to be fighting. <laughs> I will find these guys there and I know I'm still going to have to fight. So from his side, that's that's how he's been. He's wired that way. Your dad uh, is a Spartan. No, nah, he's, he's, he's an OG, straight up. Um, you know, he's 
all that smiley jokey stuff and i think people take it the wrong way but he's a fighter yeah you know and from my side as well you know we're always smiling and people think we you know we just people that they're going to push over and yeah. it's not that kind of party you know we're not out here rah rah you know looking upset and acting <laughs> angry um but you know we don't interfere with people but yeah. you know if we have to stand our ground we'll do so and we'll do so convincingly um as we have um i always wish him th- the best i wish him well because he has a lot of people around him um who are still trying to push him mm. to be mainstream trying to push him to be frontline and i think that's a wrong thing that that is being done um i think there's still a bit of fire in him that's also driving him so yeah. it's not just influence um it's just who he is um high level until um until that day and he needs to chill mm. you know it's as simple as that um he's he's 81 soon and i think in the next two weeks um happy birthday in advance yeah, old he man needs, he needs to take some it of easy. us really love him and we we catch you know, strays for it but we love him no it's he's, he's you know he's, he's done his thing he's doing his thing he needs to focus on on things that he hasn't been able to do because he's been taken you know by 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 the job of of you know serving the people um and when it comes to to just the broader family my family you know family man i'm down here with my family um you know we don't get much time to move around you know because yeah. you know we out there hustling you know bills to be paid does that frustrate you do. that you can't live a free life <clears throat> with your family um i always say this uh, it's the good and the bad mm. you know um the sum total of the positivity and the negativity i live in that zone you know there are times when things are good they really good and there's times when things are bad yeah it's really rough mm. you know um so we'll always find that that balancing point um and one day they will understand um but whatever time we we have we we spend um you know it was the first road trip i've taken my my little girls on so it was it was fun that's beautiful and i think it's the last one because they're like now nah, this is <laughs> this is not it <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're playing crappy music that's why um they probably don't like the music no no we're listening to their stuff but yes, otherwise family family life is is sure. is good it's um uh it's 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 a very welcomed you know not in a any other way but it's a very welcome distraction from from life because you know life is hard um mm. you know running in these streets is not an easy thing to do so um it's you know i drop them off at school i pick them up um you know and i try i try to 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 play my role because i know at some point it won't be as easy um so the more i can do it now the more i can get my my daddy duties in um the better just for their development and for mine as well as 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 a as a as a father um yeah so family family is cool mm-hmm. uh, we've got our ups and downs um you know but that's that's life yeah that is life uh, I've, you know i've sat with some of your half sisters uh tutus in politics ukukus in media as an example and I've, i i remember a conversation i had with ukuku in particular asking about the parents and their wishes uh politically for them and they spoke a lot about being sheltered <clears throat> from politics and those things and that the parents were just doing their thing and they were allowing their children to do their thing do you have wishes of your of your kids carrying on with your legacy are you letting them have their own life what is what is your wish as a as a father what type of father do you think you are do you think you like your dad do you want to be different from your father uh i've i've taken a lot and the, the the beauty about it is i've i've learned a lot from what he's done and how he's done it um good and bad as as usual and he gave me simple guidelines in life mm. um i always speak about it the three things he told me and i was you know just uh one i don't know for what reason but he said never um i, I never want you to own a motorcycle because i always i like cycling as a kid and always yeah. wanted you know a motorcycle and he was like nah that's coffin on wheels and we understand you know yeah. people um but that's what i like you know it's what it's you what have a motorcycle i i i i get around jeez what a bad son i i i get around you know i ride in the in the bush in the sugar cane in the forest on so a lot of concern man bikes. i understand he's got one too chief oh yeah. ah, this guy thank you very much anyway wow. so i'll leave it there Yeah, you've seen him cruising around <laughs> <in Gangland. laughs> like he's like his DMX you know rough ride but anyway um the second thing is never step into 
um, the professional fighting space because he was a big fan of of the fight game, boxing mm. more specifically. His late younger brother was a boxer, professional yeah. boxer, and he's he's got hands too, you know. So oh snap! Yeah, we've yeah, seen got, we've seen the videos of you guys. No, you know I've had to step my 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 my, my, my self defense skills up as well. So my yeah, my hands are they decent? Okay, decent to nice. You know, you're not just gonna walk up on me, chief. Nah. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the final part is he said, whatever it is that you do in life, make sure you do it within the confines of the law. Those are the three things that he said to me as I must have been, what, seven, eight-year-old. That's a yeah. heavy line. That Yeah, yeah. And um, it still stands today. So basically... They, they were lawbreakers uh, during the struggle. I, I don't think so. Or do you think maybe he wasn't speaking about the law law? No, no, no. I think, you know, no, you're speaking about the law, meaning, um, you know, the, the, the constitutionality and how people exist within... Not the law of nature. Uh, maybe you're speaking about that too. I didn't look at it that way, but for okay. me, just basically like, yo, you, you, you mess up, you're going in basically, mm. you know? Um, and he's been locked up before. He I mean, yeah. he spent 10 years on, on, on Robin Island. So uh, great advice dog. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, don't go there somewhere. <laughs> it's flames there. You, know? <laughs> you want to spend time on an island, there's Maldives, there's Mauritius, Robin. Not that one. Nah. That's not the island. Um, so I think basically what he was saying, and this is, um, what I'm leading to as, as my response is the world is your oyster. Man. Yeah. You do what you need to do, but understand that there are limits, you know, and that's the way I look at it with, with, with my family, my kids. Um, I'm not going to push them in any direction. Mm. Um, what they want to do is exactly what they want to do. You know, I've come across some, some interesting, uh, super wealthy characters in the world, uh, business people um, at the highest level globally. And you'll find some of their kids, grown-ups, in their 30s and some of them are DJs, um, some of them are artists and they were never pushed into, you know, the business world um, or the, the world of of professional sports or whatever mm -hmm. it is. It was basically like, yo, find your lane and enjoy it. From my side, I will do my best to protect you, to cushion you from, from um, whatever pitfalls you might find in life. Otherwise, follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. If you want to be whatever it is that you want to be, you do it. If that doesn't work, I'm here. I've got you, and I think that's that's my uh, my approach that I'm that I'm taking with my kids. They're gonna do whatever it is that they want to do. And I know a I know a Russian billionaire's child who was a DJ. Anyways, you grew up in Mozambique. <laughs> uh, one of one of a few places. Yes, I was actually born of, in Mozambique. A lot of people don't know your upbringing. There was a lady uh, that you and I met together, and she was like, "Oh." Tutuzan is from my hometown in Kandla. I'm like, he's not from in Kandla. <laughs> yeah, but his father, I'm like, yeah, in Kandla mustn't claim the guy. Um, I, I guess for completeness, um, where you grew up, where you went to school, um, it's a wish from me. You don't have to entertain it. I'd, I'd love you to maybe speak about your mom as well. All right. Now, from, from my side, born in Maputo, uh, Mozambique. Obrigado. Uh, yeah. Como estás, little bang? Oh, snap. You know, no, I, that's all I know. That's all I know. I can also, um, sapa, say? Ah, let me drink some water. That's Please carry on. Uh, okay. Que pasa, I say? So you, you were born, you were born, <laughs> born in Maputo in, and Mozambique. Um, those are three different languages, chief. Come on, you gotta, you gotta nah, recognize that at least. Just learn the nah, greeting. Okay. No, you got, no, you gotta be global in your because approach. Because of rugby and as the Africans. No, ah. you must be global in your thinking and your approach. Don't when I'm a big boy like you, boy, I'll, uh, I'll no, travel I'll and learn the languages. You need to, you need to, needs to be done already. No, you're right, you're right. Okay, but I'll anyways. make an effort. So moved around, lived in in um, in Zimbabwe, in Harare, spent a bit of time in Lusaka. How uh, much time? Zambia. Um, so this would have been the early part of my, up until maybe my early teens. Okay. Uh, yeah, just before. Spoke uh, sorry, before. Spoke before Portuguese. Before. Actually, Portuguese was my first language. Okay. Uh, before English. Is that what you were speaking on a daily basis? On a daily basis, man. Jeez, and then you moved to Zim and what language you so, speak then? So, um, at that time learning Shona. Shona was uh, the language in that part of, of Zimbabwe. Hectic. Uh, Your dad's not around these times. He's in and out. So it was, it was, it was, it was actually interesting when, when, <laughs> when you look back, uh, well, when I look back and, you know, I get it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I understand. You know, he, he was doing his thing. He was in and out, yeah. 
but it felt like he was always around. Okay. You know, I was actually joking when I was, I was driving up with my, my kids and then my wife and I was saying, oh, this, this dude used to take us on road trips, just randomly. We're not yeah. going <laughs> somewhere to go and spend time. It's like, go halfway, grab a lunch and come back. It's <laughs> like, what the hell? That's dope. I like you know? that. Um, so one of them was, like, his favorite thing was driving from Johannesburg to um, uh, Van Renen's Pass. Yeah. So there's a place called Windy Corner. You know, so it's the next you stop and it's always windy, I guess. Some, there's some hills and valleys. Yeah. Um, and okay, we get there. Okay, it's a bit windy and what? Okay, no, this is a place I wanted to show you. Now we're going back home. I'm like, God, hey, it's a Sunday. <laughs> I could have been playing my <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> what the hell is this? But anyways, um, but yeah. I understood what he was trying to yeah. do. You know, spending time trying to um, make up for, 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 for the lost time. But he was, for the better part, he was around. He, he played his part. Um, there was never a point where I'm like, yo, man, this, where's this dude? Yeah. Um, and, and I'm thankful for him, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for, for, for doing that. And not just for, for us, but I mean for um, all the children that, sure. that he has. Um, and then, yeah. Then, Some then, teens? Uh, no, 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 not teens. So they were still young. They were still... No, no, sorry. I was trying to go back to, you were saying that you yeah. lived in Zimbabwe until your teens. No, no, no. That no. was... So, Mozambique. Okay. Zimbabwe, Zambia. That was probably up until Zambia as well. Yeah, yeah. So in and out. It was just, it was just a weird period. You know? Okay. Uh, sometimes it felt like holidays was like, oh, it's very, it's holiday very, here. It's very long. You're traveling with your mom. Um, in some cases, yes. In some cases, not. So my my mother originally was from was actually born in um, Diplo. Sure. I remember raising this. I was like, but your mom's Mozambican. You're like, no, no, she's no, both she's been not. In South African, yeah. Okay. Um, Deep Kloof, um and that's where the love for the greatest South African soccer club came from. Kaiser Chiefs represent. Whatever you say, I will not comment <laughs> yeah, on that. We'll leave it there. But Amazulu, yeah, respect. You know, it's all love. I will we not comment one. on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see this, but um, I'm just saying. I'm just no, no comment. <laughs> Moving along <laughs> swiftly. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, South African um, lady. She was she was an interesting lady. She was very very hard, strict um, oh, as hell. Be disciplinarian, like you can't believe. And and her mother. So your grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that you know, my household was UFC before the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Straight, you know. The oh, boxing father, started very oh, early, started boy. Early man, oh, rear naked chokes, <laughs> arm bars. I'm like, oh, that's not. <laughs> but um, very hard lady. Um, very loving, yeah. um, very giving, and yeah, unfortunately, at the ripe age of 44, was out, you know, um, you know, it's things that we think about, we grapple with, but it is what it is, you mm-hmm. know, people live their lives, people make decisions along the way, um, for whatever it is, you know, and, you know, people live with those decisions. Her life, her decisions, um, whether some of us think it was unfortunate, but, set a very firm basis for what mental fortitude is, what toughness is, what understanding is, um, and what discipline is. So a disciplinarian of, of note, you know. And, you know, that's that's why I carry myself in a very, at least I believe, in a very respectful manner. Mm-hmm. Um, I respect people. So when people disrespect me, I find it very odd because I'm not a disrespectful person. Um, I afford respect to the youngest from the youngest to the oldest because it's just what it is mm. um and if it gets to a point where the respect goes out of the window then we'll deal with it that way sure you know so it was very very um very instrumental in in my my base mm. building my base to 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 where i'm at now but there's one there's one thing sorry i, I, I don't want to miss this point i'm going to go back um we've spoken about and this is important because mm. this uh, brings a few um subjects together when you look at where South Africa is now, um, and when I said it's our time, mm. you know, it's not from a point of anger and yo, you had yours, you had yours. It's 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 not from 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 that perspective. Mm. You have people like the gentleman we spoke about earlier on, who had some very flashy things to say about me, unfortunately. Uh, but I still love him. I still respect him. He's got his views. Mm. Um, you know. Let's have a conversation, but let's not be disrespectful about it. We sure. can we can disagree, but we can be respectful. That's sure. all it is. 
So you find there's generations that exist. So there's a generation of, and you, I'm happy that you mentioned um, the the interview with uh, Kevin Curry and uh, Johan Rupert that I think a lot of us tuned into. Um, there's a generation of business people, industrialists, capitalists, um, globally, but let's speak about Africa and South Africa specifically, who've existed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a baton handed down from grandfather to father, now it's the son. Um, so we've seen this happening when it comes to the, the generational wealth that's been created. Mm. Um, you know, people, that's why people talk about this white monopoly capital. And I think it's a very loose term to describe um, something that has been built over a period of time. Is it a fair description? It's, it's a description, but it's, yeah. it's like you said, there's narratives that are, that are painted forward, but as much as people want to fight it, it's, you look at the way the economy is set up, there's no running away from, if you look at um, the JSE, um, the people that control a lot of the wealth there, um, are elderly white males, um, some local, some foreign. Mm. Um, so when we speak about um, capital and the doctrine of capital having a color, it's a fact, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, we're not trying to, to, to listen the argument or, or, or weaken out our, our state of debate, but yeah. I mean, that's just what it is. But people unfortunately use it politically and it's not just become a, sl- a sloganeering, sure. which is, which is, which is a problem, you know, instead of getting away from, from the actual. Are certain people who are working with some of those people? Yeah. 100%. Not for the best interest of 100%, everyone. 100%. Um, yeah. Spot on. So you have people like, um, the, 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 the Oppenheimer families. And these are names I'm mentioning them because these are names of people that, that are comfortable domain. and they Correct. know. Yeah. Um, the Rupert family and, you know, there's other families that are, that are, that are mentioned that have yeah. done some amazing things. Let's just be real. From yeah. a global perspective, there's South Africans that have represented on the main stage. And I respect that. I, I salute it. I applaud it. Um, you know, wherever you go, these are people that, that have, have carried the South African flag um, in terms of, of, of business and patriotism. And, you know, we have to give them that, those mm. flowers for sure. Um, the one thing that hasn't happened is opening up the space for the broader South African uh, population. Yeah. And I'm saying people that would have the interest of getting involved in the business space. Because the truth is, we know there's people that on the black side of things mm. um, that are not business people. You put them out there, they won't be able to survive. Not yes. everyone can be a business person. And that's why you'll find people who leave their jobs We'll try to start something up and it doesn't go well because investment, running a business, managing people, um, scheduling, it's its its not an easy thing. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's also just the relationships that you have, mm. the networks that serve um, your, your, your ideas. Um, a lot of us still need to, to grow those. Sure. Um, and that's why I, you know, it's just... Just taking a dig earlier on with the language thing. It's just, it's a very simple thing, but the world is, 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 it's shrunk, bro. Sure. But, you know, we all need to, to, to understand this. So you have, let's call it WMC as it's described. Yeah. Then on the other end, you have black leaders that have existed on the continent and in South Africa. And the similarities that I draw between the two come from an age perspective. Mm. Right. You have most of these respectable gentlemen on both sides. So on, on the leadership side, whether you go to Equatorial Guinea, um, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, mm. um, you come down to South Africa, Mozambique, most of the leaders that exist are 65, 70 plus. Mm. Um, we hold them in high regards. Um, we know a lot of these gentlemen, they've grown us up. Um, they've taught us what we know. But similarly, as much as they are still trying to be mainstream, saying the exact same thing, you had your time, it's our time now. Mm. And it's not from a point of fighting it out. We need to understand as black people, we need to stand up, we need to, to, to be counted. We can't just sit and wait for opportunities to come our way. We need to go for those opportunities. Yeah. We can't always just be protesting and, 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 and being destructive. Let's band together and say, okay guys, there's more of us, we're a majority, where are we getting this thing wrong? Is it our approach? Is it our ideas? Is it our energy? Um, is it our relationships? We need to change the language completely. We've been to the universities. Um, we've met student leaders. We've met students. Um, mm. We've met young business people, young politicians. The language is still the same. Yeah. What's being spoken now in 2023 
was spoken in 1923, mm. in 1933, all the way to <laughs> 1993. Yeah. So at some point you're like, but hold on, what is this, what is this political language? How, how is this ideology still relevant in today's time? We've had that time. We've been liberated by by our by our leaders. We can't expect them to take us um, through um, political liberation and get us to economic. It's too much. It's too much. Two liberation struggles in one lifetime. Let's not be unfair to these mm. people. At the same time, let's take ourselves seriously because we are busy saying, no, but hey, these old people, okay, fine. Then what? Mm. No one has answers. So when we speak about politics and getting involved, we're saying we understand that there's a gap. We understand that there's a gap between the old way of doing business as per capitalism and how that works um, and the old way of politics and how those two have never, ex um, well, I'm speaking from the different racial groupings mm. because during apartheid, obviously they got along. It was one government. It was one racial group running the country and they did what they needed to do. Yeah. And they built a solid country. Let's be honest. Um, Let's be honest. Systems, infrastructure and that sort of thing. But for people who say, no, nah, I'd rather live in apartheid, that's some... Cal Manier as well. <laughs> let's, you know, let's, let's, let's just be serious about it. Um, and then from 1994 up till now, uh, we've gotten some things right and there's a lot of stuff that we still need to get right. Mm. But now the point I was trying to make from the different age groupings is you have the pro, so the, the, the plus 65, 70 year olds who've done some amazing things in their different fields. Um, and they are at the end of, of, of their of, of line, whether it be ideas, whether it be energies, whether it be life. You know, just age. Just age, bro. People are passing away. Yeah. Now, coming down the age range, who's up next? Yeah. Now, what capital does, what business people do, and we see it both in the, in, 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 in the Caucasian, um, in our Caucasian counterparts and in our Indian counterparts, mm -hmm. whether it's Hindu or Muslim or whatever, they have a succession plan. Yes. Even in family business. Yes. From our side as black people, we don't. And we just look at politics. We've just come from a from a Nazareth conference, ANC speaking. Mm. It's a mess. It's clear, and it's not starting now. It's been historic. Every time there's been succession um, um, discussions, it's been a battle. Mm. It should not be a battle. It should be simple. Okay, guys, this is us. We're up. Let's go. These are the next guys coming up. They're up. Let's pave the way for them. They're not doing that. They want to be up and up and up and up until they. Did you see the graphic when Queen Elizabeth passed on? The, the, yeah, the, the, of the hierarchy yeah. in succession. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. There's no surprise. From the time before the kid is born, they know. Everyone and knows their place and they start working towards prepping. And we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And we need to be honest about it. And we're not doing ourselves a favor because all we do is point fingers mm -hmm. and we blame. Ah, these guys, they've got everything. They've got the economy. What is it that we're doing? Yeah. So when we get involved in business and we push, People want to label state capture, very loose term. I think it's a very unfortunate term. Yeah. Um, is there corruption in this country? 100%. Yeah. Um, are people pillaging the system? 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but a state capture is something that wants to be described as in, in its existence as in the past five years, six years, nine mm -hmm. years, whatever, nine. Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. If we go back and if we have to open up this can of worms, there's going to be a problem. Yeah. Why? Because people have been milking the South African system, the African system for a very long time. Yeah. The very same people are the ones that are insulting us, calling us names. And it's like, hold on one second, bro. I'm 40 now. Sure. I was not here when all these deals were being done, when all these um, uh, unpackaging and unbundling and, and all that. You guys were there. Evergreen contracts. You guys were there, bro. You guys are still reaping those rewards. Yes. You can go anywhere in this country. The status quo remains. Yeah. So what we're saying is we don't have a problem with establishment. Establishment has a problem. I won't say with us. I'll speak for myself. Mm. They have a problem with me. Why? They think they understand me. They don't know me. They think I stand for something. Ah, legacy project, this and then I'm saying no. It's, I'm DZB. I'm my own guy. Oh, snap. I do my own thing. I charter my own path. There's no one pulling me by any strings of mm. whatever race, age. This is me. When I come here, I can say... Whatever it is I want to say, and I can say it confidently because I don't have anyone that's going to grab me in a headlock and say, what were you doing? Mm. But once again, I understand the task at hand. And I'm being brave enough. And I expect more people to be brave and stand up and say, you know what? 
if this dude is doing after catching all these beatings, if he's standing up and he's he's sticking his neck out to say, look, we're going into the main arena, more people need to do it. Why? You can't speak about a democracy. You can't speak about um, um, people getting a fair deal. And you not don't speak about the issues between the, the minorities and the majority. Mm. But once again, you will never find me saying WMC. You'll never find me saying, you know, this person is bad, this person. It's not my interest. I'm not here to point fingers. Yeah. They did what they did. The law catches up with them. It catches up with them. If it doesn't, uh, good on you. I'm here to do what I need to do. I understand the task. I understand what is happening deeply, mm. locally and internationally. We're well net- networked. We're well received wherever we go. We've got people. Um, people think that we're not going to walk into rooms We've been we've we've been on the other side of the curtain. We we know how what's going on. We know how people are operating. Yeah. But for this system to be stable, we all need to work together and we need to build something new. Because mm. all we're doing is we're fighting battles of the past. Business battles and political battles. Yeah. I'm not here to fight battles of pre-94. There's a history there, it exists 100 mm. percent We respect the people that brought us to where we are today. But we've got our own battles to fight. And we've got our own strategies. We're not going to use or deploy the strategies of through the eye of the needle. No one is interested in that. Yeah. You know, when you look at, 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 at politics and why politics is shaping up interest, interestingly is you have an ANC and unfortunately the ANC has lost credibility. Yeah. That's a fact. I'm not saying I'm not trying to say something controversial. You know, the party grew me, it fed me, it clothed me. Um, you know, it's, it's not just a political party. It's, it's, it's a movement. It's an organization. Um, it's, it's an institution, it's, it's a university, um, but it's a different time now. We need to build something new. We can't be speaking about issues of, uh, we see every year registration at universities and um, you know people are fighting to get registered. Every year? Every year. We know, okay, there's a library. Pass rates here. every year. Bro, Schools that don't have toilets. Bro, we've been to these places. Every it's, year. Bro, and you don't have to go far. People now go to some rural village, no. Any city, any major city you live in, 15, 20 minutes max from the, 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 the central business district or from whichever suburb, you will find an informal settlement, a shanty town or a township. You don't have to drive all the way to Nkandla to find these issues. Mm-hmm. You will find them right here. They exist. It's, 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 it's a horrible state. Um, so we need to focus on, on, on how we're going to get to the next level. Not everything is about criticizing. And, you know, if you look at that, that the counterbalancing from, mm-hmm. from, from, a, and to touch on a point that you made, which was very important, is um, you spoke about sports and, uh, you know, spoke about a, the Springbok economy and that sort of thing. You know, on the other side, I say, okay, cool. We left Bafana out. We spoke about rugby and, and cricket and yeah. traditionally uh, white tradition, sports. Traditionally white sports yeah. in schools and also just the way it's consumed um, at, at the highest level. What excuses do we have for? the lack of development in soccer in this country, when majority of the soccer clubs are owned by black people, mm. the PSL is governed by black people, mm. um, the Ministry of Sports generally has been a black male or female, yeah. uh, the government of the day has been a black government. How do we explain that? And how do we, how do we start to have the conversation with people that um, uh, historically white sport like rugby or cricket is far more advanced technically the support, the mm. fundraising, than um, sports such as soccer and boxing to 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 the lot. Yeah. Boxing South Africa yeah. has been managed by black people. It's been funded by government. It's a terrible state. So what I'm trying to say is, guys, we need to step our game up. Let's stop pointing fingers. Let's say we understand what's happening. Let's not have discussions about quota systems um, as much as there's been, you look at universities, because it's, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Mm. We're losing good people as well who are not able to fit into the system because you know it's 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 it benefits um, a certain majority in this case. So now we are st- <laughs> we're doing it the other way around, thinking we're gonna we're gonna write the problem when it's it's clearly not working. You know how how do we start dealing with these issues? So let's step our game up. Let's be more serious as black people. Mm. Let's not we're always blaming someone. Yes, let's blame ourselves. Accountability. Let's, self accountability. let's hold ourselves accountable. Because if we have to sit and start pointing fingers at administrators, well, there's going to be a lot, a lot of people that will be unemployed yeah. who are currently employed in the system. We've had an opportunity to make a difference in heaven. And that's why we're saying, guys, we're not interested in this old story. We're coming into politics to change this whole narrative. We're coming into politics to level the playing field. 
guys, these are the rules of engagements, uh, the terms and conditions. We're breaking that down. Mm. Everyone's going to get a fair shake. Whatever color, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's open it up. The more capable people, the more um, people that, that 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 qualify to be in these positions, whether it be in governance, in business, um, in sports, whatever color you are, let's go. You know, we, we, there's more black people than white people. So the bigger the pie gets, fundamentally, yeah. the more people, black people that will get on. Sure. But then at the same time, if you look at, 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 at uh, the economy that is white controlled, it's also in their best interest to open up the doors to black business mm-hmm. people. Why? They've had a what? In this country at least, 200 year, 250 year head start. Mm-hmm. We're never going to catch up to them. They own the systems. People like talking about they're the means of production. They own the systems. Import, export. You can go start up a nice farm. You could farm every citrus fruit. You could be in cattle farming. My brother, if you cannot get your product <laughs> to the European market, to the Asian market, to the American, whatever market, the, the broader African market, you're going to be stuck with a bunch of cows. This is why the term WMC exists, by the way. Yeah. To what you're saying about the controllers and the gatekeepers sure. of the system. I mean, we need to understand that yeah. because this is what will happen. And sorry, I know I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm, 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 I'm you're pushing us into politics and yeah. it's fine. No, 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 no. It's not we'll, politics. We'll, we'll summarize. No, I, I want us to go into politics. Okay. We'll we'll summarize the what okay. I was asking you, but please feel free. Cool. Then the final point I'll make is we also so <laughs> there's there's um unions and and how unions exist in our South African space. Mm. Right. Protecting people's rights and there's different unions for different sectors. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um workers need their rights protected. But at the same time, we need, we need to understand as much as South Africa doesn't only exist for its economy, that's what makes this country tick. Mm. So if we are going to slow down the progress of this country by politicizing a whole host of things, we're going to be the biggest losers. Right? Similarly, we've seen discussions around um, business forum activities, you know, mm. people have grouped up, which is a beautiful thing. From different parts, you want to be part of um, uh, benefiting from economic activities in your areas, your townships, or wherever it is that you are. It's beautiful. Set up, go have the conversations. But when it comes to a point where you are shaking people down, and we know the guys, these are our homies, our brothers, uncles, cousins. When you rock up to a spot, we've heard about construction mafias and that sort of thing. When you rock up to a spot, rifle in hand, and you say, guys, we're taking a piece of this business or else you're not operating. That's a problem. Extortion. It is extortion. Let's be clear. It's not business. That's not business. business. It happens a lot around this country and I, I'm scared that I'm getting to see and meet more people in the spaces. No, that's what I'm saying. We know these The guys. number of gangs that run. We love the guys. These, these, are, these are our guys. But and some of them are really nice people. No, but I mean. Very nice people. At the end of the day, and, and this is the final point and just. No, to, collega, please no, 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 feel no, no, that's the final point. And, and I, I needed to get this, this, this across because it, 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 it is a problem. Yeah. Um, and why, why, why it is a problem is once again, when I say black people, let's take ourselves seriously. We're not taking ourselves seriously. Mm. If we want opportunities, let's have the discussion and let's negotiate. Let's, let's create opportunities for each other, right? This is a space. This is what we're going to do. Let's build and, and let's expand. Um, when you rock up to a place of business, and that person eventually decides, I cannot operate because of um, however much investment I've made. I'm now making money for people that are not even, you know, putting the sweat into the business. I'm shutting down. We're going to have a problem in this country where investors, mm. including yourself and myself, mm. will say, hold on one second. I'm working for you. By force. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's see what happens when I shut down. Yeah. So what happens is in the townships, all the retail stores, all the liquors, whatever it is out there, the roads that have been constructed that are stopped um, because people want a piece of the action, um, housing projects, whatever it is. When people decide, you know what, we're not interested. We're pulling our investment. We're going somewhere else. We're going to find ourselves in a situation where there's going to be a lot of gunmen with no one to, <laughs> to extort. Mm. And we'll get there. Why? Because people say we don't want to place ourselves at risk. We're not, we don't want to place our um, um, employees at risk. We've seen people getting gunned down. It's not on. 
Yeah. If we are organizing ourselves, let's organize and let's build on opportunities amongst ourselves, for ourselves. Those are discussions, those are ideas that we can have and, and, and um, brainstorm and we can get to a point where we get investment. We can do that. Because remember, at the end of the day, we are the consumers of everything that's happening in this country. Yeah. Without us, there is no pick and pay. Yeah. There's no checkers. There's no pep. There's no and and and. Yeah. We need to realize our our position as 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 consumers. But at the same time, we need to start becoming producers. Mm. So one of the main things that we're going to do uh, moving on this political journey, uh, when we step up and we take control of this country, is reindustrializing this country. We need to get our people to work. We need to get our people to get hands on. Not everyone's going to sit in a fancy air conditioned boardroom or office and call the shots. And not everyone wants to. Yes. You know, people want to, to, to use their, their skills that they've learned in trade school or from their uncle or grandfathers. And we need to give these people opportunities because the majority of people that are unemployed are people that have got, um, um, semi skilled, um, some of them unskilled, but willing to learn. Let's give them an opportunity for the simple stuff. They just want to put bread on the table. Yeah. Let's, let's give them an opportunity to put bread on the table. And we build from there. So all f- manufacturing from textiles to you name it. Mm. We need to reinvest. We need Beneficiation to, of our own resources and even our farming produce. Done. I'll leave it there. Sorry. I, I, no, I, please I don't apologize. We're actually here for you. So feel free. Um, I just wanted to make sure before we go into politics, because I want to speak about politics since sure. you, you have a presidential campaign. I wanted to leave that for last. Sure. Um, you've covered enough on your mom and I wanted you to just say something about your twin sister as well. Then we can close that off. Yeah, sure. Um, from my side, I've got a twin sister. We all know who she is. She's on social media. <laughs> I am not on social media. I'm not on Twitter. Once again, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on MySpace. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> MySpace, you're so old. I'm not on Mixit, the, whatever. The, the 2000s don't know what MySpace I'm not is. on Mixit. No, I'm not on, not on any of those platforms. Yeah. Um, do I find my way in existence um, from, from certain content? Of course I do. Mm. But do I have a, a platform or a handle? No, I don't. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there that you know has come to visit me on my doorstep on sure. you know um, certain commentary or... Um, views being, you know, um, um, attributed to myself, yeah. which are false. I've said this many times. Because you don't times. have platforms I on don't. social media. Okay. You know, anything that I say, you'll catch me. I've said it on a microphone unless it's beautifully edited where I'm saying some, made to look like I'm saying something AI, crazy. AI, deep fake. Deep fake. And Jeez. Live. But um, from from my perspective, I, I always say this, and that's, this goes for, um, for anybody, yeah. including uh, my good sister, is... If you say something, sorry, if you send something out, you type it out, you send it out, and it's a view, it's an whatever it is, an idea, it's a criticism, it's a whatever, whatever you're trying to, yeah. to, to present to, to the public, you need to be able to stand for it. Mm. Right. So if you're gonna say I hate penalism, sure. which I don't, I need to be able to stand because you love it. Just on the record. Boom. Black okay. on black on black okay. on black. Um, you need to be able to stand in the middle of the city on a soapbox and say that with your chest. Yeah. You know, what I find is a lot of people get away with doing the 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 the, 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 the Twitter or the social media thing. Yeah. And they're not held accountable yes. for their views. So my only view on that is unless someone comes and sits in this chair on this seat, sorry, or any other seat where mm. they can air their views out and back their statements mm. out. They shouldn't be doing that. You know, there's a lot of ha- there's a lot happening in our country. We cannot be pushing negativity out there. Everyone's entitled to their views, 100%. Yeah. But... We, we fight with our siblings, bro. I've got my brother Penson, my sister Penrose. We've got such differing views and no. values. And Lim- I just, no, because no. you're twins, people assume you're joined by the hip. Let's Let's get this clear. I don't fight with my siblings. It's you guys not, are your own people. It's not it's not what I do. I've never done that. Yeah. People fight with me. I stay in my lane, I mind my own business. Yeah. In family and just in just general society. Yeah. I don't get involved with people. I'm not I'm not a someone that just comes up and just tries to get things going. It's not what I do. Mm. Everyone knows that. They know that. But if you're gonna come across if you're gonna come into my crosshairs, it's on. Sure. It is on. Politics. 
Uh, I'd like you to share the story of going to tell your dad that you want to run for president <laughs> that you told me. <laughs> Please. Uh, so this was 2020. Okay. You know, I'm not a politician. I'm a businessman. This is what I've done my whole life. Hey. But I understand there's a need to get involved in politics because there's things happening in our country and in our world. And we need to take advantage of this opportunity that's been created for us to play a higher level game. So that's why I'm getting involved in politics. I don't want to be called a politician because okay. that comes with its own stigma. Yeah. I'm a businessman who's just trying to make a difference in life. Sure. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. 2020. 20, 2020. Um, so this was early so it was before hard lockdown okay um, very early because hard lockdown was in March I yeah think. March so I actually was here for state let me see let me get this chronologically correct January 8th statement okay. which was in Kimberley at that time um, I went there and the reason I the reason I went there is because there's a there's a <laughs> There's a famous, Jay Z is my favorite rapper. Is there's one of his lines where he says, um, "People said that I couldn't come back home." You know when I heard that? When I was back home. Oh snap! So people said I couldn't come back home. So that's the reason I came back. Um, because there's the narrative at that time. I'm a fugitive. Yes, you're you know, running away. Blah, blah, blah. What, I've what? never ran away from anybody. I'm not going to do it now. Mm. And so I came back and I decided, you know what? There's a lot being said. There's a lot of politicking around this. So let's go into the lion's den and into the lion's den we went. Um, fundraising dinner. So they have the, so January 8th is basically the celebration of uh, the ANC's birthday. Yeah. Um, and they issue out statements and they just give a rundown on what's happened in the past year as a, um, a presentation and then the plans for the coming year as a party. Sure. Um, so went there, I was out there with, with uh, the homie Winston um, and yeah, we entered the space and we shook that place up down <laughs> proper. And the reason for that is people like saying things, people like placing a narrative out there and they don't mm. expect to see you. Yes. And we know these people. They think you're scared. They think we scared. Came man. here, we boy, scared. and you stole the spotlight. No, we got out there and then- the, Simba's the, back home. The, the idea was not to, you know, we're not out there to do it for, for anything else, but to say, guys, you're not just going to say things and expect there to not be repercussions yeah. when you know what you're saying is not true. Yeah. Everyone that's saying what they're saying, all the way to the lawmakers, and these people want to say stuff, they've got the information in front of them. They've got it. Mm -hmm. Six years in, bank accounts, transactions, allegations, um, statements, true or false, they're there. Mm -hmm. I got arrested, falsely arrested. My thing is, why is no one talking about that? Yeah. Right. My life, I was completely embarrassed on, on a global platform mm. because, you know, they're trying to paint this picture. But as you know, when it comes to, to, a, to a charge sheet, you know, there needs to be an A1 statement, statement, which is an affidavit by the person accusing whoever of that was not there. Yeah. I'm in a court. The judge knows it's not there. The prosecutors know it's not there. What the hell am I doing in this courtroom? Mm. Someone still needs to answer that. I can tell you, we're going to get there. And it's not from a point of me being upset or trying to get rep retribution, mm. but there's certain things that need to be undone because you guys have messed my good name up. I've had yeah. to fight to be here. I've had to fight a hostile media. I've had to fight a hostile um, um, judicial process. Mm. You know, I believe in, in, in the rule of law in this country, but I can see there were certain things that were done that were out of, out of turn. Yeah. And it's there, it's a fact. Um, so I was like, no, yo, we're gonna move into these spaces and we're gonna have these discussions with mm. the people that wanna have the discussions. Um, so managed to, to so the way it works is there's a different tables and I'm just giving the long story. You can sure. edit it how you need to edit it. No, cool. So the table we get, so each, so there's a different sponsors. So from the platinum sponsor, you sit with the president, deputy president, and you get gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And when you sit with minister, deputy minister, Weber. so the table that um, we sit on, it's the two of us, because um, we got this table and there was only two of us that attended. And guess who the minister on our table was? Coincidentally. Okay. The Minister of Justice. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Ronald Lamola. And 
you know, I took my seat and I rolled up, sat next to him, you know, like, Minister, how are you doing? Good to see you. I heard you're looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> and we had whatever conversation we had, respectfully, of course. Um, he said what he needed to say. I, I said what I needed to say, and we kept okay. it moving. Um, you know, nothing malicious, but it was just one of those things like, guys, I am here. Every time people say things, we correspond through my legal team. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm in the country or I'm traveling. If there's any allegation, if there's any, let me know. I will come to your offices, NPA, South African police, Hawks, SRU, whatever it is. I've only ever um, cooperated mm -hmm. um, and, and, and um, you know. Availed yourself. Availed myself to, to, to whatever processes. Yeah. So all these stories that they say and then the media will place this stuff out and I'm just like, okay, it's played out, but whatever. So we're sitting here today in 2023 with all that negativity, all that beating, legal, um, uh, media, yeah. we're still here. right? And what I'm trying to say is they're not going to stop our rise. And it's not me. I'm not speaking here like I'm some superhero. It's not what I'm saying. But when I'm saying our rise is there is a generation that is hungry to get involved. Mm. I just happen to be at the forefront and I'm blessed. I'm honored to be at that forefront. We need more people to, 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 to jump on board. It's going to happen. And all I'm saying is when it does, I'll be proud to say that yo, I was at the beginning of, 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 of this concept called change with young people um, arising. What happens after that, I would have played my part. My, my, my purpose mm. and my journey as per my generation is, to, is to, to, to get young people on their feet. Once they're on their feet, thinking straight, being respectful, being disciplined, understanding mm. that there's a common vision, there's a common purpose, my job is done. I'll go back to jet skiing, <laughs> go back to <laughs> cruising and having a good time, spending time with my family. That's just what it is. I'm not trying to be here until I'm 60, 70, <laughs> I'm 40 now. I'm mm. the best years of my life I'm, I will enjoy. You know, I don't want to be that old, that old guy trying to be relevant to, to, sure. to young people. You go to Ubabum Sholos and you tell him. I, uh, so uh, initially, so the funny thing is when, so after January 8th, I came back for State of the Nation. Mm -hmm. So I went to Parliament and once again, same thing. Um, sat in the stands and people were like, oh, this guy's here. This guy's here. There's the police commissioner's <laughs> there. The police minister's Why there. Why are they doing nothing? Why are they not cuffing him? And I'm like, okay, done. Went to State of the Province in Peter Maritzburg. Um, and then state of the province, I remember at that time he was flying out to Cuba for medical treatment. Okay. And he actually called me. All right. So it all started off with a, um, an idea and a need. He called me and he said, hey, I can see this thing's happening in, um, sorry, it was January 8th provincial before straight state of the province, which was in the South Coast in um, Ugu district. Okay. Um, Port Shepson, basically. Um, so we went there and we got well received. And he called me and he said, hey, what's going on? I'm at the airport, I'm about to bounce, but I see there's some action there. I'm like, no, nah, chill, yeah, I got this. It's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Go do your thing, I've got this. So we started having a conversations and then I went and I sat down with him um, in Durban, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually with, uh, with, with with Winston, yeah, and you know you, you're part of the when we met, it was part of the story, and we said, "Yo, we we're going for the presidency, man." Mm. He's like, "Okay, cool." Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, no, we're going to run for the presidency of, of South Africa. Sorry, we're going to run for the presidency. My apologies. Yeah, and he says, "Okay, presidency or what? The Boys and Girls Club or what? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "No, the presidency of this country." He's like, "Okay," stood up and. He said to some of his aides, hey, let's get these guys something to eat. But I think <laughs> they sound a bit confused. A bit they dizzy. sound angry. And he didn't come back, you know, because he took it the way he took it. Yeah. And uh, it's cool because he must be thinking, bro, I've, I've, I've done this. Man. I've dealt with beasts. Yeah. I am, you know, a beast myself. And I got these two young cats just coming and saying some ridiculous, nah. And he said, you know what? It's cool. But from my side, and this is what I say, I always say, you don't need or you don't need to seek permission to do the right thing mm. doing the right thing i want to make a difference i have made a difference and i'll continue to do so i just want to do it at the at the higher level mm. because if we don't play that game from the top down as much as we're trying to do it from the bottom up and get to that happy place we're wasting our time 
Your dad didn't ask you to run for president. No, he's never asked me. Probably to, thought you were going to be running. He's run never asked youth, me to run league. a bath. <laughs> so he actually, actually, funny enough, um, he, he he kept playing with the idea of, of the youth league. Yeah. At some point, and he knew that at that point, <laughs> when we spoke in 2020, I was 30, 38 years old. Mm. The youth league age, the cutoff age in South Africa is 35, 35. which is mischievous as well. It should actually yeah. be closer to 25. Bro, 35 B, because cats has grown, Jeez. kids, <laughs> married. You're super grown at 35. At 35, youth league, get out of here, man. 25 at most. Yeah. By the time you're finishing off your studies or whatever it is, you're venturing into the real world. You're now an you're adult. A grown man. B. Grown man. There's 35 years old, <laughs> you old cats that are, you know, more kids. Okay, I won't speak about you, but I'll speak about my son. <laughs> 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 Okay, shots. Sure. I see. Uh, no, facts. Ah, but these, so, are, these are chats I'll have with your dad. Don't worry. <laughs> He'll understand you. He'll understand you. He's got you. So uh, the long and short is people, including, didn't, including my, my, my father, they say they didn't see it. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. I didn't, I wasn't there to convince. I'm, yeah. I'm not in the business of convincing people. This is what I'm doing. It's either going to work or not. It doesn't work. Then you'll say, ha ha, didn't work. Have a nice day. That's the worst. It's also out of respect to tell you that, respect. listen, just so you know, officially, I'm coming yeah. to let you know that I'm. Everything that I've done, I've spoke, even when I got involved in business. Yeah. Chief, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm planning on doing. Nine out of 10 times, mm. he said, do your thing, man. I've given you the th three rules yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Very seldom, as he said, hold on or don't do it. Yeah. Because he's not from, you know, he's not that guy. He doesn't want to be that guy to 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 stifle people's dreams or whatever. So at this point, and eventually we had the conversation um, and he realized, no, we, 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 we're coming for that number one spot. And he That's was like, Luda. yeah. Um, and he was like, okay, interesting, keep pushing. One of the interesting things you mentioned when we were having this chat was it's ironic that some of the elders, maybe like your father, have set this example of don't seek permission sure. to do the right thing, go and do the right thing. And they sometimes get surprised when we do exactly that. And they when we're like, but we, we took it from you guys that we don't ask, we do. Because you guys haven't created a fertile succession platform. I, I, a lot of people have been asking me, I don't understand what your boy Tutuzan is saying. He's running for president. Is this in the ANC? Is he still ANC? So I think officially for for their purpose, what what does it mean? DZ 24, 2024, you're going for presidency. What does what does that mean in practical terms? How did that song go? So I like I like quoting songs. I'm just feeling in a very jovial mood today. What is it? I N D E P E N D E N T. What you know about me? Okay, I don't know that track. That's just spelled independent. G. Of course. All right then. What track Next is that? Next question. G. Okay. All right. I answered your question. Are you still an ANC member? Um, eh, am I still an ANC member <laughs> in good standing? So let me let me say this. Are you still pro ANC just in general currently? I am pro change. And if there's people in the ANC that are pro change, I'm riding with them. And the ones that are not, I'm not riding with them. So why not join another political party or set up a political party? Join which political party? I don't know, another one that would be happy to host you as their face. Nah, they, they're not ready for me. Bro. You name them, they're not ready for me. Why? Because, so what, what has happened and why I'm, why I'm, why I'm excited about 2024 yeah. is there's going to be a game-changing dynamic. Um, whether we're there or not. Yeah. And all we're saying is we want to be there because we don't want to be those passengers saying, ah, we had an opportunity to play a part and we didn't. Because sure. we can see there's a lot of clowning going around mm. in the political system. Yeah. Um, the ANC is a party that has, well, well is now mm. a party that has more leaders, more members that are part of the organization, mm. that are eking out value from the organization and its position in government, then adding value okay. to the organization. I'm not for that. And I've seen this in, in, in discussions and meetings. There's some very good people, and a lot of good people in the system. Don't get me wrong. But the way the system is structured, it's not going to work. It's not there to create value. Mm. It's there for people to take value from 
whatever the flavor of the day is. And basically what I'm saying is as the younger crop, as black people in this country who want to play mm. a, a, a much more positive role, unless we are there to create value, understand what value is, we're wasting our time. You're going to be on the ballot next year as an independent. <laughs> In, yes, in, the, in the current format, how do people support what you're doing? How would you like people that want you to be president of the country, to run the country, to shake up politics and the economy? How, how do they get involved? And Firstly, firstly they, they need to see themselves at the highest levels of what's happening in this country. Um, and not just, you know, people are quick to create heroes and villains yeah. and, and jockeys and whatever they're called. Yeah. So you've got to step up. So wherever... wherever um, you're involved in your communities, in your, in your school, university, in your place of business, mm. in your home. Any small role that you play in making a positive impact, you must do so. Because it's all those little wins that create the, the, the bigger bang. We're building up to that bigger bang and it's not going to be possible if it's just penul, the black pen. Yeah. You know, doing it individually then like, no, yo, we've got you, we support you. No. This is, this is what we've done over a period of time. Mm. We create these individuals. And this is what leads to the problem. And the individuals start doing all sorts of crazy things, start saying all sorts of crazy things. I mean, it gets to a point where you can't, you can't, you know, pull them out of, out of, <laughs> out of the, off the podium because yeah. you've created a monster. Sure. We need more active, credible people in the system. It can't just be one man or one woman. But you know, the masses, they, they know the old way of things. They want the t-shirt with your face on it. They want to sign up somewhere. They want to, fill in a form, sure. they want to donate a bit of money, they want to be part of the campaigning, they sure. want you to stand on a podium and get them excited. Are, are you planning to do stuff like that? That, that That's How part and parcel. How do people impossible. get involved? That's part, part change, and Hashtag change cartel. Change cartel. I mean, it's, it's a simple thing, right? It's We stand for change. It's a grouping of people um, who are coexisting amongst each other, pulling different networks, networks together yeah. to make a change. We are all about change. And, you know, people take it lightly, some... Ah, you're seeking um, validation, you're yeah. looking, you know, and I'm like, bro, I've got better things to do with my life, number one. Um, and number two, if we don't do this now, South Africa's history, we are at the precipice of a change in the ne negative um, format if we do not get involved. I realize this. I'm, of course you realize it because, you know, we see the information that you put out there, um, as, as weird and wonderful as it is. But, you know, as people, some people like criticizing it, but all you're doing is you're spitting facts. And it's facts that are, are hard hitting, unfortunately, but facts nonetheless. Rob Hershoff and some of his circles are worried about the country crashing. Mm. I had Vuzitim Bawayo here. He was saying it's inevitable. Mm. Our country is going to crash and we must allow it and just position ourselves for the bounce back. Are you also saying that, well, it sounds like you're saying that if we don't get involved, it'll crash? Or are you saying, let's get involved now so that when it crashes, if it crashes, at least we're there to help rebuild? Reflex, you know, we all understand what reflexes yeah. are, right? Country. Crash. Yeah. We're sitting here, none of us did anything. Country. This is all we're trying to do. We understand that we do not want it to go there. Mm. We are this hand that's saying, bro, we don't need this country to crash. As a matter of fact, I always say this, we're not living in a crisis in South Africa. We're living in an opportunity. Okay. We have the biggest opportunity to turn this place around. Are there a lot of negative things happening? Of course, we see the crime stats. We see the state of generation of power and electricity, um, we see just crazy things happening in our country. Mm. But I always say as much as all of that is happening, let's focus on positivity. Let's focus on giving people hope. Because mm. once people lose hope, I'm not going to let people lose hope. Once we have a hopeless generation, yeah. it's over. There will be no bringing this country back. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but mm. we've seen in parts of Western Europe, we've seen it in parts of Africa, parts of South America, parts of Asia, Asia Pacific, mm. countries have crashed and they ain't coming back. Mm. Let's not let that happen. And that's what we're saying. Let's be that hand that says no. Maybe not a fair question, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on 
the DA, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the EFF and Julius Malema, because a lot of eyes are going to be on, on them come next year. Sure. And maybe the DA is a bit clearer, but do you think the EFF is what it claims to be? Or do you think it's actually a appointee of the ANC to just manage certain angry people DA from the ANC? District attorney. We use <laughs> oh, the, the political party. Funny, my funny. Um, this, is, this is the way I look at it. We've gone from the politics of liberation and struggles um, and getting to a point where we come out of that in 94. Mm. So the politics of, 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 of liberation. We moved to the politics of race. Mm. So it got to a point where, you know, black party, black voters, white party, white voters. Yeah. That's just what it's become, you know, and there's certain parties that we know are out there. I don't want to mention the names. I'm not the guy to point fingers. Yeah. We all know who they are or who, who these parties are. We're at a point now where we've quickly come to the politics of, in my view, the politics of class, okay. haves and the have-nots. So we're at a point where the race is going out of the window. People are looking and saying, okay, we see Penwell doing his thing. He's got all these wonderful ideas, um, uh, but what about us? Mm. And these are black people, mm. right? So it's quickly going to go away from the WMC finger pointing to the Penwells, the DZ saying, but actually, you're supposed to be the clever guys or the yeah. guys that have got ideas and have all these networks and you haven't managed to pull us out of poverty. Yeah, We have a problem with you. Yeah, You've left us in the rural areas, in the townships. And when I say that, I'm, I'm probably speaking about everyone in this room mm. behind the cameras as well because we understand as black people, there's people that look to us for a lot of stuff. Yeah, And if they feel let down, they, they act on it. You know, acting may be voicing it out, acting may be, um, you know, trying to, shake you down, you know, mm. um, and it's quickly getting there. So we had the politics of, 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 um, of class at mm. the moment. The danger with that is the target is no more what people have always been singing. It's the white man. The target now is you and me to a point where I even say to some of my my, my Caucasian counterparts, like, mm -hmm. yeah, what are you guys worried about? If anything has happened in this country, the people that they're going to come for first are the people who they see as black people living lavish lives. Yeah, Those are going to be the first targets. They'll be like, yeah, we'll get to you guys, but we need to start off with these guys that we thought they were going to bring us out of this out of this hole, and they didn't. Meanwhile, Silver we see thought. them, yeah, we see them flying first class, we see them doing the 100%, they'll yeah. be saying that. So when it comes to the shaping up of these parties, um, you know, I don't. I don't speak about these parties because these parties. I always, I always said, and I was at um, Coastal College, which is in the South Coast, in in um, KZN, mm. right, Umbumbul. This was maybe three weeks, three weeks ago, um, and they were having SRC elections. So it was a campaign. So they invited invited um, some of us to come and just you know speak and just give some some viewpoints. Yeah. And there were different political parties, different political activities. There's people that are happy to see us there. There's others that were acting like they're not happy to see <laughs> us. Because afterwards, it was a different story. It was yeah. all love. Um, and my view is very simple. And if we can depoliticize everything that we say or do, if we can take away political jargon, political colors, away from what we're trying to do, where we just say, guys, it's a society. We're trying to build a country as a society. When you leave that hall, when I say this, when you guys leave this hall in your different political formations, by the time we are out, we're on the highway, you guys will be smoking and drinking together and cracking jokes. Why? You guys grew up together. You probably went to the same schools. You're probably neighbors wherever you're from. You're just pushing a different um, um, political narrative of, of um, formed into the different political parties and political colors. But at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Mm. There's issues of, of water supply in the college. There's issues of registration fees. We're all fighting for the same damn thing. Mm. Why are we acting like we're on different sides? We're not on different sides. So the quicker we pull together, and that's what I'm saying, whether it's within our own races, um, tribal groupings, um, different provinces, this is a no-brainer. Mm. This country will, will flourish. 
But as long as we have people pulling us apart, people using politics and using um, the politics of, I always say this is a this is a term that I like. I'm not sure if anyone has said it, but you know, um, I, I speak about it, and mm. you know, I'm not saying I've coined the phrase and might exist, but I always say we need to move away from the politics of desperation to the politics of inspiration, because people are looking to be inspired yeah. in this world, not just this country. The more we push people, we take them along a journey of destruction. We take them along a journey of of hate. Mm. It's going to be difficult to undo this hate that you've instilled in people for years. The blame game of whose fault it is for this, uh, the, the, the conditions you're living in. Mm. We need to say to people, uh, to, to get out of these conditions, we need to band together and we need to make this thing happen. We need to work. Because the thing is, some people, I uh, uh, saw one of your, your tweets, I'm not sure how old it, it was because, I mean, they circulate, but we're speaking about the current government and people not, people aren't at work, um, people deserve the ANC government, if not worse, and corruption, blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, obviously people have certain things to say, but as South Africans, if we are not willing to physically work, and a lot of people are not, people want to become music artists, DJs, they want to be in the entertainment space for the most part, and in front of the camera, not even the production side, mm. just to be famous and yeah. to, 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 to make um, whatever living. We've seen them come and go. It's not sustainable. You know, we're focusing on entertainment and we should be focusing more on education. Not everything is a party. We all want to have a good time, but if we're going to progress, if we're going to to play the natural order of things where there's generations and, and succession, we all, we've all got to take ourselves seriously. So by the time we step off the seat or step off the podium, there's people that are capable coming up after us. And they're there. There are a lot of smart people, a lot of young, smart people out there. They just need the platforms. They need the opportunities to showcase their goods. I need to be excused. I don't know if you guys will keep rolling. I've been holding on. I need the bathroom. Normally, that's me. I'm happy Please. that it's you. Man. That's why you, you don't can need see. the bathroom. I took I took a sip here. B. I'm on my comrades marathon, chief. Please, I want us to go for another 15, 20, if you don't mind. My brother, easy. Please give me two minutes. In the meantime, y'all, I'll take over the show. Are we still rolling? <laughs> Q, are you gonna come clap again? Or we just carry on rolling? <laughs> I mustn't clap. We're no, still no, 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 no. You're not an editor. It's cool, I'm not an editor. I'm not an editor. I said, you don't need a clap, bro. Where do you show up? Take two. You can clap. Second segment. After ping. Okay. I don't know where you're going to edit. I don't need to say, uh, I just came from the bathroom. No. You know what to do, Q. Come on. You're the magician. You're going to vote for Kenzo. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> one of the questions I did ask, uh, which I, it's unfair, you know. I think you've given enough explanations on the on your view on the country and politics sure. to a point where I almost can fill in the blanks for other questions. But I I did want to still ask: Do you think the EFF is an independent party? Do you think they were basically asked by the ANC go and take some of the angry younger people? because you're still kind of from the same family and your thoughts are on the future, if not yourself, of a Julius Floyd presidency in the country. No, I generally don't like speaking about other people yeah. and other platforms because what, what they do is what they do. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not here to, 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 to shed any negative or positive yeah. light on, on, on them, but I understand the, the space that I'm in um, and, you know, I'll venture my opinion in, in this case. Uh, the project of politics in this country has always been very one-sided, mm. um, determined by a few, right? So if you look at where we're at and, and, and you, you, you work back, ideologies, manifestos, you know, people can come up with all sorts of brilliant um, um, literature, yeah. but actions speak louder than wor yeah. words. Um, you look at the actions of of people in the in the in the political space. It's it's very unfortunate. Sure, you go all the way from parliament. Um, you look at the level of discussions. You look at just the way that room is run. Mm. Um, the energy in that room. We don't have time for that. Um, it's it's disappointing. Um, it is. It's it's something that we should not be. We should not be seeing. 
we have serious problems that we need to deal with. Um, we have issues in this country that we need to, that need urgent attention. We don't have time for bickering and, and arguing and people trying to sound cleverer than the next person. Now, when it comes to to, to Parliament and the um, how the opposition parties, because you asked me about the, the two opposition parties, and more especially the future of a party such as uh, the EFF. Yeah. We're living in a country where people, people are not foolish, you know. I always say the greater good always overcomes and uh, will always overcome. I always say that people understand what's happening more than people think they do. So the politics of retribution, the politics of hate, the politics of sowing division, the politics of anger, it's got a very short lifespan. If you look at people being destructive, it's people that have, that don't have much to live for. So if you look at a lot of the, the protesting that happens, it's people that will join because it's basically one of those cases. And I mean, it's, it's been written in history. You look at anything from the Communist Manifesto, they speak about it to all sorts of books that are being written um, and, and all sorts of um, teachings that people have come across. In society, if there are more people that are in dire straits or live in, 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 in environments that they have nothing, they can't put food on the table, they don't have access to water, electricity, are homeless or live in a, in a shack, they will always be the first to spring up when it comes to being destructive. Yeah. So now, if you are a leader and you are playing on people's emotions and you're taking negative aspects to draw them and take them up on a journey, It's a journey that's going to lead to complete chaos. It'll lead to complete destruction because it's no secret. The majority of people in this country are have-nots. Yeah. The majority of people in this country would love to see themselves in a position where they are living in, in better conditions. And if not, they will destroy. Why are we getting people and why are we pushing them? Why are we fast-forwarding to destruction mode? Hmm. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not on. So... When it comes to the way that the, the, the narrative, um, the messaging um, is, is, is put forward, it's, mm. it's unacceptable in, in, in our society. I don't care what anybody says. If you are a leader, you're there to lead people, you're there to organize people, and you're there to make a difference. You're not a leader of a, a gang subset. Mm. <laughs> you're not the leader of some a mafia um, grouping. You're yeah. the leader of a political party. And as per your political party, you're here to fight for people's rights, you're here to fight for the better the betterment of, of people and people's lives. And if you're a leader, you're there to offer solutions mm. and you're there to be part of a solution. You've been given an opportunity to to offer solutions in places where you've you've won over people and you have not done so. Because if that was the case, we'd be seeing these differences. And finally, when it comes to the protesting and getting people to rebel rouse and 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 create anxiety in society, well, leaders should not be protesting. Leaders should be making a difference. That's why you're there. Hmm. Um, that's just the way I see it. So I think there's a there's a very short lifespan for for that level of of politicking. Um, I think people have seen through it. I think people will continue to see through it. And why I'm saying this, because people say, I oh, know, why are you hating, why are you... I don't believe in that, in that level of politics, number one. And then secondly, if you look at the way the numbers have gone, I mean, the numbers don't lie. It's basic maths at the end of the day. You look at the decline of the ANC vote um, from 62 to, what is it now, 55, 54. Mm. Uh, for calculation purposes, let's say, close to 10, let's call it, let's call it a 10% drop. Yeah. Um, why is it that the other opposition parties, the official opposition party, um, the DA and the EFF, haven't picked up on those numbers? So if you look at their numbers at national and at local government, their numbers haven't shot through the roof. That tells you a story. Yeah. Um, and that story um, that, that is told, and it's part of the discussion we've had 
Um, there's a certain gentleman sipping on a macheu now that we have. <laughs> I'll mention his name. He knows himself. Shout out to macheu. Yo, banana flavor. One of our one of our guests actually owes us like sponsorship of of macheu. I need to follow up with him. Yo. but I'll chat to him another time. A meal and a drink, all in one. Banana flavor. That's the one. Banana is the one. That's the one. Um, there are three majorities that exist in South Africa. And this, I'm speaking directly to to my brother and others that are were part of this conversation or privy to this conversation. Because what happens is people will look and say, "Okay," because when the, the question is, "Would you vote for so and so? Would you vote for me? Yeah. You know, why wouldn't you? Or would you vote for that person? Or do you vote? Why don't you vote?" And people have different answers, and t- people have different preferences. Um, you know, not everyone is going to agree with what I'm saying and, and the direction that I'm going in, which is cool. You know, it's. It's not a train smash, yeah. but all I'm saying, and this is why I keep pointing down to the journey that we're on. It's a journey of inspiration. It's a journey of bringing the youth, the young people on board. The three majorities that I speak about are number three, and I'm just speaking from an order of preference, preference yeah. when it comes to me and uh, where we're at. Number three is the black majority, right? which is South Africa, majority of people in this country are black people. Yeah. Right, so when it speaks to majority, we speak about a majority rule, which means um, the overarching power will be the power of the people that group together and that overpower any other grouping, whether it be by ideas, discussion, debate. It doesn't have to be politics, but majority rules at the end of the day. In this case, we're talking politics. So we have black people that are living in terrible conditions, generally, majority of them. Yet a lot of them are not voting. Right. Is the vote the be-all and end-all of our country needs to change? No, it's not It's not what I'm saying, but it's the beginning. Mm. Right. Second majority, oh well, number three. Number two would be the female. Right. And not by race, just the female grouping. Yeah. Females are one of the most underrated, underappreciated, underappreciated, underutilized groupings in our society. Mm. They are every day we hear about horrendous things that are happening to our females, Mm. young, old, um, acts of criminality. Uh, We look at just lack of opportunities because of being female, um, just representation and all those, um, those, those discussions. And once again, I always say, and I have the discussions with a, with a lot of females, is what is it that you're doing? Now we've lost hope and you know everything that we try to do, we don't have a voice and we understand. Africa, South Africa, it's a very patriarchal society. Yeah. That's a fact, whether we like it or not. But you guys are the outright majority, generally, mm. across society. Globally. There are more women than men. Yes. yes. And politics is still seen as a masculine thing. In 100% this in this country and an, an, an old masculine thing. ANC Women's League, it looks like they support the men. That's not looks less exactly Sorry. what they did. They didn't support the female as in a, a female candidate uh, as, an, as an example. Yeah. But I mean, that's just, you know, I don't know. That's just the way females are, are, are wired. That's how. Um, eventually, you know, it all it all leads down to the patriarchal nature and you know the 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 tiffs and the fights they have amongst themselves. I mean, we see this. It can be all love, and the next thing, purely because they don't want to support each other, they'll go a different route, yeah. and they always find themselves um, on, on on the back foot. Yeah, females need to stand up. You've got the numbers. Mm. If you need to start up your own thing, start up your own thing. Yeah. No, I'm not in, you know, we're not in love with, with being at the, at the highest position. All we're saying is we understand that position comes with decision making and the tools to make a difference. That's why we're aiming there. Mm. If it's a female, even better, we will support the female. Yeah. If she's got the goods, let's go. But you've got to step up, use that base, use that power. And then the number one majority is the youth majority. Yeah. Right. Majority of this country are young people. Yeah. Once again, not even racially, just from an age perspective. Overwhelming. I think demographics say only 9%, I stand to be corrected, only 9% of the population is over 60. There you go. And they're all sitting in parliament. <coughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> Drink some tea. I'd like your permission to joke out tea, you know, full of jokes. <laughs> um, so I wanted your permission. <laughs> Finally, it lands. <laughs> it wasn't landing at some point. <laughs> um, I, I, I want your permission before you carry on. You want to finish on the youth point. I want your permission after you you make your youth point to ask a few questions. Yes, and to interrupt your answers so that yeah. I can get through all of them. Okay, sure. not not a problem. So as I'm looking at the wonderful lady behind the camera, yeah. Because we had this discussion and she's she she had some some input. You find yourself in a very interesting position where you encompass all these majorities. You're a young black female. Mm. You've got everything going for you. You've got the opportunities, you've got the networks, you've got the numbers, you've got to stand up. And this is all I'm saying. The reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is because I'm standing up. There are other people. They're not talking about playing the game at the highest heights. I'm talking about playing the game at the highest mm. heights because that's all I've ever done. Scares them as well. That's all I've ever aspired to. Mm. That's what everyone aspires to, to be at the top level um, and to, to <laughs> I was going to say, to, to be a top G, bruv, um, <laughs> is to play at the highest level and, yeah. and, and to make a difference. Now, people should be pulling together. Mm. You should be, and I'm not saying you as in as in as in um, you as a personal person, but I'm saying the idea of a young black female. That's the most dangerous thing for anybody in this country, in this society. Why? Because if you guys pull yourselves together, it's over for everybody. Yeah. And that's what you need to be doing. So when we speak about these th- these three majorities, as much as they 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 can be banded together for some people, everyone needs to stand up. If you look at the 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 rates of unemployment. It touches upon these three majorities, the youth being the, the hardest hit, mm. a whole lot of qualified people, unqualified, whatever it is, but lack of opportunities. Yeah. People who are well-educated now are even saying, you know what, I'll take whatever menial job, I just need to put something on the table. Mm. Anything will do. Why should we be in this position? I find I find myself constantly asking why females and young females aren't consuming educational content. Mm. I've listened to Joe Rogan uh, in America speaking about it. I've spoken about it to DJ Spoo. There's a friend of mine called Nkulia Gonkeo. When you look at the demographics on YouTube of people that are watching educational content, overwhelmingly young men. Um, and then there's this culture now of, of young females chasing <laughs> for blessers, wanting to be pretty on Instagram. And I, I don't know if it's Slay. intentionally... <laughs> done like that no, no, my, qu- my questions I'm going to try and, and I apologize again if I'm going to be interrupting um, a lot of people want to know what being an independent candidate means and how that's going to translate in the ballots next year cool uh, before I get to that yeah my final point in the three majorities the common thread with all black female young is we're all playing the victim true that's it. All it's we a fact. do, black, we play victim, victim every day. Complain. Female, we don't want to do this. All saying it's someone else's fault. Some, take that power that you have and turn it to a power play. You can do it. It's doable. Let's do it. Whatever I need to do to be a part of it, let's go. Mm. If we need to support something new, let's do it. That's that's the game I'm playing is a game of bringing everyone to the table. It's not just for myself. Mm. Simple as that. So let's stop playing the victim game and let's take these um, instances of of, of victim because yes, there are victims. Don't get me wrong, but let's take ourselves from being the the the, the position of victim from being in a position of of of, of being victim to mm-hmm. being a position of being a power player, power broker, of just being in power. It's doable. Let's do it. That's the journey I'm speaking about. But anyways, sure. um, getting to 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 the question that you asked about independence, I think. There's still legislation that needs to be finalized. Mm. Um, they're ratifying it. And I also think it's quite an interesting thing that they're doing because if you look at the independent play, double-edged sword. Yeah. Number one, introduced, um, because what do they say? The reason why they're introducing the um, the, the, the instance of, of independence running for political office is because from 94, 1994, um, the elections have been run unconstitutionally. 100%. Um, because there hasn't been representation for anyone else but major political parties. You have to join a political party Correct. to be able to, and it was unconstitutional. And shout out to the people that have done the work to challenge that. I know Sismandi Samashiko we've had here, and 
had on this platform, and she's mentioned that quite quite a bit, that we need political reform sure. so that independence can run. <clears throat> so you have, um, so why I say double-edged sword, and this is very important, watch this. You have what you just said, thanks mm -hmm. to um, Mrs. Mashekho and everyone else, getting to a point where it affords people like myself an opportunity, and yourself and anyone else, to say, you know what? I don't find um, representation um, out there for me. Mm. Um, I don't find a landing pad for what it is that I'm trying to say or do. I want to do my own thing. I, there's people that believe in what I do, so I'll place myself in that position, which is a beautiful thing, mm. and I appreciate and respect it. On the other hand, I think it was put in place to deal with the issue of majority parties. So you're watering down um, certain um, groupings of political parties who've enjoyed um, power yeah and not just at national level but you know in small small parties in rural areas and and very other, powerful very very powerful very controlling powerful. running things mm. so i think that's been done for that but anyways once again averaging out positive negative we find ourselves here there will be a coalition and i remember having this there this, will be a coalition yeah 100 percent. next year yes sir this is your prediction chief it's you ANC look, is going under 50. In some cases, people are predicting under 40. Hectic. Yeah. Okay. At the rate at which we're going. Okay. Yes. There will be a coalition. There will be a coalition. And that's what everyone was pushing for. Okay. Right. Now, here's the beautiful, the beautiful thing about the coalition. It's going to bring in new representation, new ideas, new avenues for people to support and to push. My view on coalitions in this country we're not ready for coalitions yes. in South Africa. Um, why are we not ready? It's, we have too many differences amongst each other. Yes. Internally, you look at the ANC, factionalism and different 100%. ideas, just from the ruling party itself. Then we spoke about politics of race, people from different um, upbringings, racial um, denominations. Um, people think differently. Mm. People approach problems differently. Um, people have different solutions according to the problems at, at, at hand. That may not be the same. Um, you, you know, problem solving in 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 Houghton will not be the same as as, as problem solving in Howick mm. because of the different dynamics. Yes, you know, um, and then you also have the different. You have um, tr traditional and cultural issues. You know, some people do not see people from other um, uh, cultural denominations. You know, running them. <laughs> yes, you know, we've tribalism seen tribalism is very strong in this thing. country. To this day. Racism, number three. Tribalism, number two. Number one, xenophobia. Mm. Biggest threats we have in this country, in that order, in my view. Um, so you look, at, you look at, 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 at these issues, and I remember having this conversation, and the question I was asked was by um, Mzwandila Masina, mm. former mayor of Ekuruleni. He launched a book that had to do with coalition governments mm. um, and invited us to a cocktail. Interesting people around the table. And the professor... I'm not, not going to mention his name because I want to put him in the poo-poo. <laughs> um, so he asked me, and he said, look, I see what it is that you're trying to do. And the political questions are, you know, interesting. And I support it. We need, you know, he was a very outward thinking. Yeah. And he was an elderly gentleman, um, probably in his late 50s, early 60s. Mm. And it wasn't Rob Herself. Um, <laughs> so he says to me, Coalitions, ruling party, you're a bit too young to be in, in politics. I said, what do you mean? I'm 40. Grown-ass men, mm. family, kids, anything. There's more life. I'm at that point where there's about to be more life be <laughs> behind me than ahead yeah. of me. So, you know, I've, I've, I've crossed that. He said, yeah, but I mean, if you look at someone like the mayor, you know, he's still a young politician. I said, what do you mean young politician? The man's 50, 51. Hmm. Right? This is what we need to understand in this country. It suits people to say they're young when it comes to politicking. The very same elders that, that you spoke about earlier on are mischievous when they say, Chief, you're still too young, wait your turn. Ageism. Straight up, 1994, if you look at majority of these guys, they were about my age yeah. when they started running the country. Let's talk about my own old man. He's 80 now. Mm. Almost 30 years ago, you'd have been in his late 40s. Mm. 
You look at the former Secretary General Ace Mahashule, one of the most powerful political fi- political figures who have emerged in recent history. He's been the longest standing um, Secretary General in history hmm. in the country of all, in the ANC. So if he is 60 now, how old is he? Cheers. In 94. So that whole thing of people saying, no, but you're too young, no, cats. You do. <laughs> Some of you were, were younger than I was when you guys assumed power. I've spoken to Mandi Samashiko. I've spoken to an amazing gentleman, Dr. Sizwe Mpofu Walsh, yes. the son of uh, senior advocate Dalim Mpofu. Both of them state that if you want to become president in this country, you need a billion rand to campaign. Are you in agreement that you need a lot of money to have that type of influence politically? And how does that make you feel for ordinary, hardworking leaders that want to serve but don't have the money or the financial backing? Uh, I, look, I think the politics in this country has been pushed towards um, rands and cents. Mm. And I think it was a moment in history. Um, is there finance that, needs, uh, that is needed for campaigning? Of course, someone needs to fund the activities, logistics, um, consumption of, of food, mm. entertainment around it, because you know you can't you, to, to keep people's attention. You need to break it up with entertainment in yeah. between, and uh, t-shirts and whatever other merchandise that will will be part of it. So that is a no-brainer. But I think what happened was in the confines of the ANC at that time. Mm. So it wasn't a government election; it was a party election, and by becoming president of the ANC at that time as a majority party, um, you become president of the country. Mm-hmm. So that happened within the party and um, the, the, the president um, assumed, if we're talking about the money that was spent, because the billion rand will be what we all believe are <laughs> in the sealed documents <laughs> on how that money moved around. Moving forward, I think it's going to boil down to people just wanting credible people. People that have like-mindedness and people that are willing to do the work. Mm. I think we're going to get to that point very, very soon where people will realize, you know, all this fanfare on um, politics and politicking, we're over it. We're going into coalition. Um, I mentioned uh, why I believe we're going into 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 coalition mm. um, when it comes to the percentages. That's ex- exactly what's going to happen. Once you are below 50, you're going to have to start talking to some homies to say, oh, Let's work together. Sure. Um, and the people that have, though the parties that have close to ten percent, they'll be they'll be power brokers in the next election. The EFF. I wanted to also ask about the importance one, of social media. One of a few. Of course. Yeah. I wanted to ask about the power of social media in an area where we're no longer looking at T-shirts and stadiums and buses. And you're speaking about human beings looking for credible leadership sure. and servant leadership. Sure. I mention yourself, normally in my videos, I mention Chris Papas of the DA in Umgeni district. And I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I mention Tlantla Lux and Soweto Parliament. Sure. I mentioned Gaten McKenzie in the Karoo. He's not a politician, but I mentioned Ian Cameron of Action Society. Sure. And these people I mention, I mention because they are visible on Shut social up. media. Shut up. That's Ian Cameron, boy. <laughs> uh, the power crazy. of social media, which you've used, in my opinion, I don't think you've used as aggressively as maybe like an Atlanta Lux and a Gaten, the power of social media outside of fancy campaigning, because I know Barack Obama's team didn't have as much money as the Republicans, but they invested the little bit they had into social media and, and your thoughts around the future of, I'm not going to feed you, I'm not going to pass you. Sure. I'm going to take my 10,000 rand, I don't have a billion, and I'm going to pump it into making quality social media videos of cleanups in Newlands, of us electrifying the roads, of us cleaning bushes, fixing schools. What do you think of that? As a, as a counter to having a big pocket, having young leaders use social media. Shout out to the late, great Ricky Rick, who went the Hilton, Durban CBD. And he's a Hilton College old boy. <laughs> um, there were some awards happening there. This would have been 2021 maybe. Mm. Uh, yeah, probably 2021. And there's a whole host of easy, there's a whole host of people that in the lobby area. And I met a lot of people that I hadn't met before. Yeah. Um, happened to be in, in that space. Um, actually, met Vusi for the first time as well. Timberwine? Yes, Vusi Timberwine. Solid. Sure. 
and we had some 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 interesting some good discussions so amongst the fan fair i mean it was just people were fanning out and it's all over the show you know? and you know you need to understand that some of us are not we're not celebrities i'm not a celebrity <laughs> um but uh, you know i've had the strange requests for photographs from some people so man keeps laughing <laughs> <laughs> so he almost muffled under under his breath he said okay the next elections will be won on social media mm-hmm. and I, i looked at him and he was talking to himself i don't know what 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 he saw yeah you know and it always plays in my mind because i do believe that that's the case that the power of social media the power of how to rally on social media is unbelievable how mm. to influence how to 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 get messaging out um it's powerful mm. super super powerful and especially today within the political space but what people need to understand because i'm not on social media like i yeah. said as earlier earlier on i'm 10 toes down that's the way i've lived my life you know there's an element on social media that is very fictional yeah. it's hollywood it's not real um as much as it may be real people there's a lot of manufactured yeah, content a lot of correct um which is cool when we understand it and i've always said to myself if i ever build anything which i've done before in the business space i want it to be built organic because mm. i don't want the thing where now you doing something you're pushing it you are advertising you get the numbers up and followings and likes and mm. then people interrogate and they'll say actually there's nothing this is bored I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I'd rather not have it. Sure. Which is the, the the position I'm in now. But as time goes on, watch the space. I told you people are not ready for what we're about to do. Mm. Simple as that. Even on the social media space. You said you're not a celebrity and I I I'm assuming you meant from an entertainment perspective, but you're a celebrated person for business, your links to the Gupta's, your dad. <laughs> And shout out to Ricky Rick man because I'm thinking he was on the track with the uh, Interbase Dubai and and Big Zulu sure which trended for a while where uh, Imaleningi sure there was a video you did uh, as well in that space and I I think what Ricky said carries a lot of power and weight and I I do hope as much as you're a bit old school with feet on the ground that the team that you work with will understand the value of let him do his work let us capture the work and then we'll punt it out there so that kids on TikTok uh kids on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at least can see the work. And I'm I'm fascinated that you mentioned Vusi Tembewayo. You know, South Africans when they giving you a compliment on social media and they like what you have to say, I normally like ah f- for president. Tlantla likes for president Vusi Tembewayo. And and I wanted to hear your thoughts on getting or working with some of the guys I mentioned. Sure. Bringing people that are not necessarily into politics, a Vusi, someone like a Trevor Noah, an ambassador like a Black Coffee, bringing those guys into, yes, I know you're not into politics, but you guys are putting in work. It's transformative. It brings foreign currency in. You've got the ears of international people. I mean, look at the work Acorn has done on the continent. Sure. Would you consider collaborating and working with the guys I mentioned and some of these non-political guys that have influence and they are doing in their industries work They're like yourself pin all the black pin boom straight i work with anyone that's willing to work with me um all the names that you mentioned have done some amazing things i mm. mean they're carrying that flag and they they flying it high for for brand south africa to some bedu young black female Bro, there's there's people doing great things, you know, mm. not taking away from anyone in the entertainment space as much as I said what I said earlier on, but not everyone can be at that level, you know, they're chosen few. Yeah. Um what happens in that space and and I, and I found is the let me just say this. What happens in the political space, or anything that's related to politics, is very hands off um when it comes to people that are in the entertainment space. We've seen people making statements and one society via social media have come down hard on them and political um sorry just analysts in general um and then secondly when people pick a side mm. or people choose to work with someone they're seen in a different light and then what happens is all the good things you had going the next thing sponsorship is pulled away saying okay you should be supporting DZ instead of supporting Penu. 
we don't like your approach. We don't believe in what it is that they're trying to do or he's trying to do, or whoever. So the next thing, you're called into the room and you're wrapped over the knuckles. Mm. Stop saying what you're saying. As a matter of fact, denounce it or else mm. there goes your show. Uh, cancel culture. So I feel like even though there are people in the entertainment space that have great views, because a lot of them do have great views. A lot of them are, are active, but not in a public space. They're afraid of their pockets being affected. Mm. That's just what it is. Yeah, because it's, they get affected. Some have tried and they've been affected. So bearing that in mind, I also don't want to be engaging or speaking with people who I know are going to, because I'm a hot potato, bro. Mm. I'm a proper hot potato. Yes. I mean, you don't have a bank account, which you means you might me, not even have money. You, you, need, you need to think twice. That's why I'm saying anyone that's, that's ridden with me and is riding with me, I respect them. Yeah. They understand the task at hand, they understand the mission, they understand the pain it comes with, and they've stood. Mm. A lot of people have disappeared. They're not ready. But when we get to that promised land, we're going to have that conversation, for sure. I want to shut down this conversation, but I'd, I'd like you to commit to a, a sit down soon, whether here or on another platform. Sure. I want us to unpack your business history, if you don't mind. I'd like you to unpack working with the Guptas. I've got theories around what they were doing, were trying to do as a certain narrative, not necessarily to counter, but outside of mainstream media. I'd like us to chat about that. I'd like us to chat about your relationships outside the country, in particular in the Middle East. I think that's very valuable, especially for South Africans and internationally to understand you in India, as an example. I don't think we're going to have time to speak about it today, or at least it's going to make this much longer than. Um, but I think in closing, um, so yeah, it's those things, the Guptas, Dubai. Are you not tired, some of, are you some not of, the tired work. of that? Are you not tired about? No, you see, so you, you I, live, you live this. Sure. And I understand. I'm speaking specifically about this, this Gupta topic. No. Anything, so. So, so I know you're tired because this is your life and it's been your life. Mm. But especially going into a space where... No, I'm, I'm not tired, but I'm just saying just from a consumption perspective. No. Because that's a question I'm asked all the time. I'm like, oh, no, I'm it's, sure it's, people are tired of it. Okay, yeah. You, this, you, uh, you, know uh, the, you know the crazy thing? Uh, when you spend time with young people, with people on the ground, the things that you assume everyone knows... They don't know. Got you. So anyone it. who's on my platforms, I literally have people that have so much content online. I sit with someone and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. Our conversation interview with DJ Spoo. Sure. So many people are like, but I thought this guy was, he's not what I, and you're like, no ways. The amount of media out there doesn't make sense. So I want us to tell the story of the Guptas and business from, an, from your perspective, in a, in a way, because people have normally asked, are they corrupt? Did you? I don't think they've ever just, just listened to a story sure. of a young, Not ambitious guy. Um, the work in the Middle East, India, I'd like you to speak about some of the work you're doing now. Because again, social media, introducing people to the king of the Zulus and what the vision of the Zulu kingdom is. Some of the dignitaries you've brought into this country, some of the business visions that you've had. If we speak about it now, it's going to be another two hours. So sure. I'm asking you to please commit to another sit down. But in closing, I'd like you to close I by- I commit fully, whenever, you, whenever bro, I'm here. Thanks, you know even this. if it's in Durban, hopefully. Different setting, maybe by the beach, pretty people. We can do that, I'm easy. Uh, I'd like you to, this is your chance now to campaign. Why must why must people vote for you? I, I hear you saying people must <clears> rise <throat> up, people must have accountability. You like people that act, you're on the ground, but this is your chance now to, for someone who's going to be like, okay, just sell yourself to me. Why must I vote for you next year? People need to understand one thing. You're not voting for me. You're voting for yourselves. I am a conduit. I am who you are. I am your issue. I understand your issue. I've grown up in those issues. I've come out of those issues. I've been hounded and I'm still standing. The story of me as a black person, as a young black person in this country, is a story of everyone else's issues in this country. So you're not voting for me, you're voting for yourself. You need to place yourself in a position where you're able to make a difference. You're looking for an opportunity, you need to walk to that opportunity. If it's gonna be through me, being that person who's going to kick that door down, 
I'm happy to do so. If there's someone else, then go to that someone else. I can tell you now, they're not there. You look around, they're not there. Why are they not there? Because this is a very treacherous journey. It's a very dangerous journey. Not many people are up to that task. People like sitting and talking like this is easy and okay, no. Do the song and dance, you know, do a backflip. I'm not here to do backflips for people. I've achieved in my life. I'll continue to achieve. All I'm saying is if we want to get to that point where we're having conversations, where we're sitting around the table and we're earning, I'm your guy. If you want to continue on the track of the same old-ish, then continue. It's all good. Then we won't have the conversation. But the opportunity of a lifetime for the current youth of today, the generation of today, is next year. There's not many weapons you have. There's not many tools of making a difference you have at the moment. The first one you have is a power of the X. Simple as that. Why? There's people that have mastered the art of not <laughs> of not having the popular vote, but controlling how this country runs. All we're saying is, bro, step up. Your X hasn't meant anything. What I'm saying is this time, it means everything. And you have to do that. If it's through me or if it's through someone else, all I'm saying is, I'm here. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get these three majorities to the conversation. Let's get them to the front line. Let's get them to a point where it's no more victimhood. It's being bosses, <laughs> boss plays, building up to a position where I know I'm not going to benefit from what's happening now. I've, I've missed that benefit of what's going to happen next year in the political space. This is for the next generation. This is for my kids who are four, five, six years old. This is for them. It's not for me. I'm not going to benefit anything now. You're not going to benefit. The people in this room are not going to benefit. But what they're doing is they're saying, we're this generation, we're going to play our part for the next guys coming up. Succession, hand-me-down, generational. We need to create that wealth. We're not doing so. It needs to start somewhere. And if we don't do it next year, then for the next 50, 100 years, we're going to be sitting and having these very same conversations of people sitting around tables and sounding clever and ain't doing anything about it. It's a starting point. Let's start somewhere. The solutions, we all know what we need to do. Everybody knows what we need to do. We understand the issues. You bring anyone into this room, they know what the problems are in this country. We need to go from thought process, we need to go from planning into execution. We're going straight into execution mode because that's the one thing that we fail to do as a government in this country, is execute, make decisions, build, create wealth, open up the space for opportunities and employment. We haven't done that. It's a lot of talk shop. It's meeting after meeting. It's debate after debate. It's commission after commission. It's tiring. It's boring. But if you're going to come along this journey with myself, you better have your work boots on and your gloves because we're going to be doing back-breaking work. You're not going to be seeing me sitting in the back pointing and directing traffic. I'm on the front line with you. We're cleaning up feces in the streets, then we're doing that. And if it's not your cup of tea, then don't come on this journey. Because if we're not able to do that, if we're not able to fix the simple things, potholes, access to water, then we've got no business talking about nationalizing a reserve bank. Not going to happen. Let's perfect the simple things. We're here to deal with the simple things. And then once we sort out the, 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 the structural reforms, it's game over. But people mustn't say, ah, he surprised us. No, this is the aim. This is what we're going to do. Is it going to upset people? 100%. But for the benefit of the greater good, because if we do not bring the majority along this journey, the voiceless majority, the poorest of the poor, well, there's going to be no country to speak of. That's where we'll be. Jeez, DZ, thank you so thank much, Thank you very bro. much, sir. Um, from the bottom of my heart, from when I first met you, I'd like to thank you for embracing me as a brother, for respecting me as a person. Everywhere we go together, I see how you treat other human beings. And initially, I thought maybe it was teachings from your dad. It's fascinating that you're, you're shouting out your mom, you know, which is very important for me, especially as black people, to acknowledge our mothers 
who do so much. Um, I'm looking forward to us having more conversations. I'm looking forward to you setting more of an example of work in action while people think it's just PR stunting. Um, and for coming through, it means a lot to me and I'm, I'm looking forward to our next sit down. Tutuzane Zuma for President 2024. From my side, you're not just going to cut out like that. I have to Change thank you. cartel. I have to shout you out, pen all the black pen, for pushing. As much as you come under a lot of criticism for your views and, and, and how you place your views in the public space, you stand your ground, you stick to your script, which is your script and no one else's. You're in your own lane and there's no one that can deviate you from that because it's your lane. I respect that because a lot of people, any pressure comes, they start fumbling, wobbling and you know, quiet. Yeah. Uh, so I respect what it is that you do. I appreciate what it is that you do. Um, there needs to be more voices, real voices out there, uh, voices that are not scared to say what on people's minds at the tip of their tongues. Um, and more importantly, I appreciate the relationship um, that, that we are building. You know, we still have a long way to go, but it's taken a very positive step. We've you know, it's grown in leaps and, 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 and bounds. And like I said, I'm a hot potato. Mm -hmm. And for you messing with me, I know I know you know what that means. Um, you know, which leads me to, to the point I'm trying to make. You're not afraid. Um, you're courageous. You're bold. And that's why you're going to get to wherever it is that you're trying to get to. Um, and hopefully when you get there, you won't forget about some of us. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. I hope you won't forget about some of us. Um, we need more people like you in the system. We need more people that are willing to speak the truths um, and everyone needs to play their part, bro. DZ Zane, thank you so much, bro. Let's go. Out.